What's happening, weirdos? This is a delight. Rory Scoville. I think I say I do say it in this episode. Uh, I didn't want to make him uncomfortable because uh, it's always weird when someone's like, "You're my favorite stand-up comedian." But Rory Scoville is my favorite stand-up comedian. He's incredible. This chat is incredible, and Rory is on tour currently. He's about. It's about to start. So if you're listening to this the week it comes out, you are in in line potentially, to go see Rory live. Go to Rory Scovel, S-C-O-V-E-L, dot com, and you can get tickets to any of his shows. Honestly, nothing, this sounds almost like romantic, nothing compares, but nothing compares to seeing Rory live. So do yourself a favor, one of the best live comedy experiences you can give yourself, go to RoryScovel.com and check him out if he's coming to a town near you, and I'm sure he is. Uh, I am also on tour. Go to PeteHolmes.com. This is how it works. Rory Scoville, RoryScoville.com. Pete Holmes, go to PeteHolmes.com. I just, I'm going to be adding even more dates, but I'm about to be in Nolens. I believe I'm saying that correctly. New Orleans and then uh, Dallas. Lots of, lots of dates. I'm going all over the place. So go to PeteHolmes.com if you would like to see me there. Or if you're going to be in Los Angeles, go to Largo-LA.com. I have a monthly residency at Largo which is always the highlight of my month. So you can see me there and often Rory there. I often have Rory on that show as well. So go to Largo-LA.com for that. This show is brought to us by our friends at Magic Mind. For you guys that are new to the show, I only do ads for things that I actually use and actually love. And Magic Mind is, I don't know, it's its the product that I think has changed my, my life the most in the past year. It is a productivity drink. It's not an energy drink. I'm always giving it to the guests. I'm always giving it to my friends, creative types, and otherwise. What is it? It's about 35 uh, milligrams of caffeine, just a little bit of caffeine. And it's got adaptogens that help your body cope with stress. And it's got nootropics like lion's mane that help your brain function. So it's nootropics, adaptogens, and a little bit of caffeine. So it's wonderful if you're trying to drink less coffee, but it's also just wonderful if you want to boost your mood, boost your productivity, boost your energy, and you don't get uh, wired, you get dialed in. This is an absolute secret weapon for me. I always drink one before I do the podcast. I always drink one when I sit down to answer emails, dial into some writing, dial into a uh, any amount of work that is just feeling daunting. The adaptogens ease that stress, so you stress less, and then you do more. I absolutely love it. That's why I'm always offering it to the guests, and we have a special discount. If you go to magicmind.co slash weird, you'll get 20% off your order. Fight off procrastination, brain fog, fatigue, and some ADD symptoms, and get into that flow state with Magic Mind. I absolutely love it. Magicmind.co slash weird. Also, speaking of life-changing uh, products, this is my Apollo Neuro. You guys know we've been working with Apollo for a while now. It's absolutely, I dragged my feet. Val first told me about it. They were like, there's this piece of wearable technology you can wear that vibrates into your body and it helps you relax, cope with stress, energize, dial in, all that sort of stuff. I just thought it sounded too good to be true. So I had one in the box for a long time. I finally put it on. The first thing I did with it was meditate. Because what it is, is it, as I said, it's a wearable piece of tech that uses almost sub-perceptual vibration to speak to your nervous system in the language that it can understand. And it has these different settings, energy, uh, focus, meditate, calm is what it's called now. It used to be called meditate and uh, mindfulness. Now it's called calm because you updated. But it's it helps you ease into meditation. That's the first thing I did. And I was like, is this thing meditating for me? It was remarkable. It helps your body relax, it helps your body sleep, it helps your body focus and be more productive. It's basically a wearable hug for the nervous system using touch therapy to help you feel safe and in control. You can wear it on the wrist like I do or on your ankle. It delivers gentle, soothing vibrations that train your nervous system to recover and rebalance after stress. It's a wonderful way to get more energy. It's a wonderful way to get focused. It's a wonderful way to fall asleep. That's a huge help. So many people having a hard time falling asleep. This is a chemical-free way to lull your body into deep, 
natural sleep. It does all of these things. It trains your body. The more you use it, the, the, the better it works. It's not woo-woo. They don't sell them in crystal shops. It's science. It was developed by a neuroscientist and a board-certified psychiatrist. And their effects, uh, the Apollo's effects on stress, sleep, cognitive performance, and recovery have been proven in multiple clinical trials and real-world studies. And me and Val are no uh, no exception to that. We tell everyone who listens what a big difference these make. So many weirdos out on the road show me theirs, and it makes me happy because this thing has really made my life better. Show your support for your body. Show your support of the show. Get 10% off by going to apolloneuro.com slash weird. 10% off at A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O dot com slash weird. All right, everybody, let's get into Rory Scovel. Go check him out, RoyScoville.com. Get into it. I just tested this morning. It's not... Unless Cove? It's Cove 20. You got Cove? I got the 2-0. When's the last time you had it? Coven? Yeah. 19? Yeah. COVID-19. <laughs> When's the last time you did the Cove? I had it once. Yeah. And it was Same. during a press tour... <laughs> but a Zoom press tour. <laughs> yeah. And I Val and I decided to go up to Ojai. Yeah. And got a Airbnb. This is before we moved. Yeah. Because Val, I don't know if your lady, your lady love is like this. Yeah. Val is very like, we should go to a new space. Yeah. Like I'm I'm like a caveman. Yeah. I'm like, Patrice used to have a joke about. We don't want to go out. We want to draw the blinds and like stare in a corner, just like replay <laughs> memories and be like, should have should have played that different. And Val is like, she's like a, a pixie, like yeah. in a field with daisy petals. She's like, let's go to a new space to quarantine. Yeah. And we did. And it was so small. That's all I remember was like, I'm so big. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you classify me in your mind as like a giant man, but I yeah, am. I do. I'm giant. I do. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, you I, know, I big dogs do. don't do that. I'm not saying you're a dog, yeah, but no. this is a great comparison that big dogs, they can't, you can't perceive yourself a certain way. For instance, yes. the, 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 the similar to this, I am, I grew up, I was so small and short and I didn't go through puberty till like late in high school. So my perception of myself yes. as a 5'11", 6 foot, 190 to 200 pound man yes. is that I'm tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Can I, what, what size are you in your mind? Yeah. Is not what size you are. Right. I dated a woman. I've said this before, but I think it's important. And I mean this as literally as you can mean something. Yeah. <laughs> when she would yell at me and she was a real, she was a real bull whip. Yeah. Whoosh, she'd get me. Yeah. She'd yell and her <laughs> eyes would turn black and just a little spitfire. Yeah. I thought if she pushed me, I'd go flying like Superman. Right. Like, cause I, <laughs> and like, you're a giant over And I'm a giant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she pushed me, her arm would break. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, it's like pushing a, like a cowbell or right. what is it called? A, uh, 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 oh, dumb. Or help uh, me with the riff. Dumbbells. Help me with the riff. What is it? It's a, a bell. Cowbell? Not a cowbell. Kettlebell. Kettlebell we're for more, the win. We're more kettle chips and kettlebells. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Kettlebell. So Kettlebell. We quarantined in this place, and I just remember every door I yeah. had to like stoop. It was like an old ass. You're in a hobbit. The I'm in hobbit a hobbit thing. I'm Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, You're Gandalf the part in the Lord of the Rings where he keeps. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else is running around with meat and cheese platters, and I got my big floppy wizard hat, yeah. my staff, and I am not. And it really does. Is Gandalf showing up just looking at them like you got you guys can't come to my place? You fit in my place. You don't re I don't fit in here. <laughs> <laughs> Quit inviting me to your birthday party. Have it fit here. at my place. Why are we not doing it? Every that? chair is a throne to you. Every bed is a is a California king. Yeah. Why are you bringing to humiliate Why am I, me? What am I doing? You want to humiliate me. <laughs> yeah. Don't. I have to sleep outside. Ooh, yes. <laughs> My feet were hanging off the bed. And this is what I was going to put to you, because I'm blabbing and boring right up top, 
Go is get like, into it. I, it's very easy to make me feel, I wish it wasn't true, but you can make me feel off center and just wrong. Yeah. And it fucks with my mojo. Like, uh, uh, this is my question to you. When I'm going to do a stand up, uh, and you're, I, I, you know, I say this all the time, I don't want to make you uncomfortable, so I won't look at you. But you're, if not my favorite, I can't think of who would be my favorite stand up. God, I, didn't look I love at you. that. I didn't look at you. Look into look me. Look right into me. Rory Scoville, <laughs> great comic, great guy, riffs, smokes doobies. Uh, but I love what you do, and you're a thank you. You're a mo I, it's incredible. I actually I was listening to your record on the way down. Is that true? It. Yeah. God. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. And I well here comes the comp. Okay. And I don't mean you don't have to pay. <laughs> I mean I'm gonna pay a compliment. Perfect. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and then we just sink it in the couch, and that's how we died. They died in, the, in a rift. They got eaten Barrel. by the couch. It was a Pee Wee Herman style couch that was hungry. <laughs> Did Cherry ever have to eat a motherfucker? Did Cherry bite at some legs? <laughs> just, just, you are sitting on, on Cherry. You're suffocating uh, Cherry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, my name's Cherry. Talking about perception, Cherry's like, you perceive me to be a couch. I was born this way. Oh, <laughs> you decided I'm a couch. I've always only been this. I, I'm glad in your world, <laughs> yeah, chairs I'm look like me. But in my world, you look I, like... Yeah, my <laughs> world, I, this is what we this look like. This is normal. You're saying I'm a couch. Just because I'm soft. I bet Cherry hated that they called her Cherry. Yeah. It's like, it's actually Bridget. <laughs> yeah. Cherry, Cherry. Yeah. Cherry Paul. She yeah. calls him Paul. A subtle dig. Yeah. Really, Paul? <laughs> uh, Jerry, stop Constant using... Constant issues on set. Stop using my real name, huh? I don't want to be an actor. I just want to live amongst my chair people. It's like in... I just watched The Edge of Tomorrow, Live, Die, Repeat, and they're like, don't go... Because he keeps living the same day over and over. And he's like... So funny. I just watched that recently, too. It's really good, right? I, I think it's a great sci-fi movie. And it's I'm a not a big sci-fi fan. And I love it. Uh, if they're paying for things in credits, I'm usually out. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I know. Oh, how weird. A hologram <laughs> is giving me a food, food item <laughs> for six credits. <laughs> Fucking beat it. It's always raining. I know. I feel, see, I'm channeling I know. you. Figure it out. <laughs> you got flying cars. You can't stop the endless acid rain. You can't improve umbrella technology. The best they have the in Blade Runner. Acid rain. The endless acid rain acid is still rain, a problem. Did acid rain ever take off? Did we ever get acid rain? I was. I didn't. You think it was like dissolving well, umbrellas? As kids, yeah. Remember, as kids, I just said this the other day. As kids, our whole thing was. Watch out for the ozone layer. And I just remember as a kid, you're it's always gone. like, as long as we worry about the ozone layer and we don't chop down too many trees. That yep. was like the whole, that was Neither the whole of those thing. Neither issues. You know, like acid rain's coming. And you're, and then we didn't get the acid rain. Oh, I thought you acid know, rain was a thing. It wasn't a thing. It maybe was a thing. I don't know. It didn't seem yeah. like it. Yeah, I think we would have heard about it if people we were We stopped melting. with the aerosols or whatever, and, and supposedly the ozone layer has it's actually... <laughs> Like which by rejuvenated the way, itself. Trump did that thing where he sprayed hairspray and he was like, I don't care, I don't care about the ozone I layer. Know. And people cheered. And as a comic, I, I was like, that's like a 1985. Like, I know. Look, do do your thing, Trumpy, yeah. but that's hack. I don't <laughs> like, that, care about like the ozone layer. And people cheered. That's what I mean. That's what's like that's bizarre. It's like riffing in the style that my mom and dad would be like, ah. Because <laughs> you know I mean? to, to them it was just yesterday We were all about that ozone layer yes. To you and me most of our lives We weren't talking about right. it But Trump's going in the archives and being like <laughs> I don't care It's the yeah. ultimate staring at the sun Comedy stance Is yeah. I don't care about the ozone layer Yeah, It's such a Lewinsky It's pre-Lewinsky It's, Lewinsky. Lewinsky. it's pre-Lewinsky He just on a dress <laughs> He's all over it Yeah Beautiful blue dress, ruined it. Now it's worth a million. But in the Smithsonian, you can't say Smithsonian. But in the Smithsonian. Like, I am so, when people can't say their words, yeah. even Trump, if he was like, I mean, I, I, like if he was fumbling, I, my heart would break for him. Yeah, I know. He, it doesn't matter. I think it's because of what we do. It's because, because of what we, we know we what do. it feels like. How naked it is. I like botching a joke. Boxing saying a, a word too soon. When I watched Chris Rock and he said, because he didn't get nominated for, and he said the wrong movie. Yeah, yeah. And then he said concussion, and I'm like, I bet there was a concussion, concussion joke, because yeah, he yeah, got yeah. a concussion and Will's in a, and yeah. he messed it up, and he just goes, I messed it up! I'm just like, ah! Yeah, I know. I just can't. Especially in that moment. 
That moment. Where it's live. The, and the only bit that anyone cares about. And you feel it. You I feel felt it. it and I, it, I it's not cute. Yeah. It's not funny. I'm not at home with my cigar going like, ha ha, sucks to be you. Yeah. I'm, I'm him. Yeah. And I'm peeing it's my pants. Just, it's, just, it's that relatable, empathetic moment of like, I know what that feels like. Yes. And the pressure and the expectation. And yes. it's live. <laughs> See, tripping. I was just going through my mind of tripping. Tripping can be funny yeah. because your body's so floppy and silly. Yeah. But when it's just words and it's like, <laughs> it's not funny to me. But when you, you stub your toe on something and you, and you flop about, yeah. suddenly you're just a corpse. Yeah. A breezy corpse <laughs> flip yeah. flopping on your way down. That, uh, that I'll laugh at if yeah. they're okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you ever watch, I don't want anyone even, Faces of Death? Do you remember yeah. Faces? Yes. Yeah. What the this fuck? This is surreal because all these things have recently just come up. Edge of Tomorrow. Okay, I just here, recently for the watched. people that care, I was just going to say, remember, he's like, I should go and just report that this is happening to me. And they're like, they're going to dissect you. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's always like a thing. Right. I forget. There was some way I tied that to. Edge yeah. of Tomorrow and Faces of Death were both in Face your Face of Death came up re recently because it was the, like, Face of Death and also the original, like, MMA UFC uh, videos. Oh, of like, like broken limbs? Like when UFC limbs. first started. When someone like hit someone yes, wrong and, and their it arm was goes like, flop. And it was, it was truly like you versus you. And it didn't, the weight, there wasn't oh, weight yeah. class. They weren't it same was just, styles. Someone built a cage around a fight that yes. was already happening. Like someone was showing up to be like, I'm just really strong and I like to beat people up. And someone else was like, I'm five foot two and I know jujitsu. Yeah. And, it, and they literally... They just watched the mishmash of who would win. But Faces of Death, yeah, I saw uh, one of those and just... It's not funny. It's not funny, and it's it's strange that there is this compulsion and fascination with it because yeah. it is so horrific and it is Face the road death, we're all walking for down. Pe for like people who don't are. know, it's VHS tapes. Yeah. Like, let's say a like security footage got some guy falling off a thing and getting hit by a car yeah and it's like it's uh what is it it's taboo it's so like you taboo. shouldn't watch it extreme taboo, taboo isn't really discussed much but yeah. it's a re it's as real as butter on your bread it's like a yeah. biscuit like you feel it <laughs> like when you feel taboo yeah you're not like i don't know how i feel you feel motherfucking taboo yeah. it's like you're six, like we shouldn't do this it's like that <laughs> the board game taboo it's like the board game taboo it's like the sixth sense of like uh yeah of uh uh, what is it? The like the uh, umami. It's, like it's umami, umami, but it's no like, taste is like taboo. <laughs> yeah, when you're exactly. watching real yeah, yeah. footage of someone's last moment, yeah. like like whoop, and they yeah. fall down a flight of stairs. Yeah, I don't want to see it. There was one going around recently where someone got in an elevator, but it was empty. You don't see anything. Yeah. Or somebody showed me a video of a guy who was like a daredevil. He's like, I'm gonna do pull ups, but like off the world's tallest building, yeah. and he just whoosh, just yeah. goes straight down. You don't see anything. Right. Don't care for it. it. Doesn't, Even as yeah, I'm saying it now, my hands are sweaty. I, I'm getting it too. I hate it. Taboo. Yeah, it's so <laughs> taboo. This is taboo. We got the taboos. <laughs> it's so, like nothing is happening. I know. But it even already just happened. the thought of it and like, and, and here's an element that I think, because uh, there are people that like don't care. They're very flippant about it. And also Who there is a world people? where they are like, they're like, well, people die or whatever. Like think extreme things happen. And I, and I sort of get, they're sort of black and white about it. Sure. But I think there's personality types. And I, I think, I think most people are like this, that when you see it and the guy drops, you're going, who is his family? Oh. What will they be told? What will that, you know what I mean? You start we're building because all... we're, we're all of us human beings are storytellers, but then some people are like, well, I'm, I do it professionally. <laughs> So then th you're more inclined to yeah, go, yeah. what did he have for breakfast? What was it li what like leading up there? What breakfast Who's up there is that falling? Watched? Yes. Who's up there that's going, and there goes Mike. Who's down there that saw? Yes. Splat. Yes. Splat. Uh, I and what breakfast? I used to have a bit about that with, with uh, strippers. I, I'm too, in, in, I, I, I have to say this because people have literally come up to me and confronted me yeah. and been like, stop shaming sex work and all that sort of stuff. I'm yes. not. Yeah. I'm saying it's hard for me to invest in the narrative of a stripper, an erotic dancer. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I'm floundering. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just, just shoot me. You shoot me and the relief on my face. 
<laughs> thank the, <laughs> as you pass away, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I give you permission. You may air this as thank a Faces you for of releasing Death video. Me. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine? That would be the best way to die. It's like you're just floundering trying to talk about something yeah. where the language is changed. <laughs> Someone shoots you and you deflate like a balloon that was filled with panic. And yeah. you just go, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, like, at least this I know how to do correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I don't have to pay taxes this year. <laughs> it's hilarious. Yeah. Have you seen, I know he was scandalized. It's still a great bit, Louis' bit about killing yourself. I don't think so, no. Yeah, it, it was very funny. He was like, everybody gets one. Everybody yeah. gets, it's like, I got to go to work. I got to go to work. He's like, yeah. no, you don't. <laughs> it's a very, very dark joke. <laughs> yeah, right. But it addresses something that we're all... We're all on the knife's edge. Yeah. Suicide, I understand. We take it. We put it on a plate. It's not funny. Yeah. Woven into a bit, we can find the the dark release. Yeah, the yeah, The dark yeah. release. Yeah. Anyway, so I go to a, a, a strip club, and uh, the woman is dancing, and I'm thinking, what did she have for breakfast? Exactly what you said. What, yeah. What breakfast? It's right here. It's right there. It's in here. Yeah. It's being gurg gurgled. And she's and dancing broken, around. And she's dancing. Yeah. But I never forget that there's a colon packed bacon, with shit. <laughs> bacon egg sando. Oh, God. Now that's what I want. And what is her? <laughs> bacon egg and cheese. That's hilarious. The guy McMuffin. who can't stop thinking about the complexities. Griddle. Would you have a McGriddle? She's like, just put your dollar up here. <laughs> Did you have a McGriddle? <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest. We are the weirdest. The guy that's like, oh yeah, show yeah. me those nips is not weird. <laughs> the, the, we're the I freaks know. going, do you have a McGriddle? <laughs> I was always the guy that would go, what's your real name? Yeah, yeah. Like that's the fucking, I don't do that, but that's the fucking creepiest thing. But what's I can't your get, real name? what's your real, Mercedes? And she's like, it's destiny. It is destiny. It is. It is destiny. It happens to be hot lips, <laughs> sir. <laughs> it's hot lips destiny. Jesus. Hot lips. Hot lips destiny. My social is 69, 69, 69, 69. <laughs> Does anyone have that? Does anyone have is that? Is it even possible? Can you be four pairings of 69? Is it possible someone has all zeros, all ones? Like, did they really start... Yeah, <laughs> that they started. Like when AOL started, could you make it six nine six? What could you do that you can't do? Yeah, because you know the DMV started making it that you can't make things that, when read backwards, are offensive. Because that's, oh, how, that's how clever we are yeah. uh, and horrible. People starting putting like <laughs> slurs like backwards, oh, right? Yeah, terrible words backwards because uh, you see license plates backwards most of the time. Yeah, like ambulance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Like <laughs> ambulance. Yeah. Does One of the really most offensive need, does words. Does really need to be backwards, by the way? There's the woo-woo. There's the lights. Who's going like, let's But what is let's, it? Let's investigate. Wait, is it a fire truck related? How am I pulling over? With sympathy? Also, only ambulance is backwards. Nope. I know. Fire trucks aren't doing no, it. They Police know, aren't doing it. they're big and red. No. Why Just, is an ambulance like heads it up? Is, it's the most intellectual of the emergency vehicles. <laughs> it's the smartest one. There's doctors in it. That's true. That's so true. they're like, one doctor yeah. was like, I, thank you for bringing the patient here. Shouldn't this be backwards? Because most people see it in if their rear view. If they see it in view. the mirror, they're going to need to read it. And then the guy that paints the ambulances is like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, bring all 100 back. <laughs> bring all 100 ambulances back so we can fix it. Fire truck is basically written in crayon. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wee woo. It's a big red wee woo. Yeah. And it squirts wah wah. It's the most basic. Yeah. Well, the fire trucks are like, what? Do you think we're something else? Did you think we were something else? You thought we were a food truck that you think serves it, yeah. very long submarine sandwiches? Yeah. You think we're a gimmicky food truck? We're a fire truck. Everyone knows. Yeah. Is your child into trucks? Uh, no, How not old really. Is your baby? She's seven and a half. That's not a baby. I know. It's crazy. That is the age. Uh, this is a little weird, but that is the age that they say that, that innocence, not, it's not a bad thing, yeah. tends to be compromised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is why, this is a fun fact. I'm not Catholic. Yeah. The Catholic fun fact, that's why they confirm at seven. 
is yeah. because that's when they're kicked out of the garden. <clears throat> right. They no longer, again, it's not a bad thing. It's not right. like I'm talking shit about your daughter. Right, She's right. not pure. <laughs> She's not pure anymore. <laughs> but around seven boys and girls both yeah. tend to have some little crack well, it starts to in happen. In the facade where they go like, yeah. wait, everything's on fire? Well, it's because, I think, also, because now they're, it's it's our influence on each other. So now she's more social. She's in the second grade. Yeah. And you have other kids second testing grade. the waters of, you know, cursing or yep. talking about something. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think it'd be sex yet, but like death, it's something I, death I, or like I walk drugs or like school. mention yes. mint, not that they're doing it, but mint being chip. like beer, mint chip <laughs> ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Something like I said, mint chip yeah. or mint chip. Yeah. Mint chip. I dropped Leela Chocolate off at school. Chip. She was late. Um, and I walked her into the classroom and, and she's such a sweetie pie. She wants a little transition time. She doesn't want me to just leave. Yeah. Yeah. So I sit in the circle. And they're singing a song that, best to my memory, it was yeah. this morning, I still yeah, yeah. can't remember, <laughs> was like, uh, two little monkeys in the tree, oh, yeah. but it's not the bed. Yeah. You know this one? Yeah. Going, Sally, little alligator can't get me. <laughs> alligator crawls up as slow as can be. Snap. <clears throat> and then you deduct yeah. one little monkey up in the tree. So they sing yeah. this all the way down. Yeah. We're having a ball. Brutal murder. Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm going to be real with you, by the way. I was loving it. Blood snap. everywhere. Okay. No way it's not. You're ahead of the story. Yeah. Uh, which I love. At the end, Renee, the teacher, goes, oh, no, one of the kids goes, what happened to the monkeys? Yeah. And someone immediate, one of the other kids goes, they ran away. And then another one went, they went swimming. Then Dean, who I love. Yeah. Dean, by the way, synchronicity, dresses like a fireman most days. Yeah. He doesn't need it backwards. He doesn't he knows care. Where he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. care. He knows. Dress for the job you want. <laughs> I can't believe I've never said that to him. There's a child I see almost every day dress in the helmet and the jacket and yeah. the boots, and I've never gone, hey, dress for the... I'm a professional comedian. Never occurred to me. I just went, oh, fun, yeah. fireman. Well, it's, it's jarring. It is jarring. <laughs> It'll take you back. You're like, yeah. you feel like Gandalf. You're also like, is this Benjamin Button? Was he a fireman? <laughs> I don't want to insult a grown yeah. man aging backwards. Yeah, I don't want to insult what could be a 90-year-old man. <laughs> Who continues to be in the fire brigade. He calls it the fire brigade because he's very old. That's his That's his tell. That's his tell. If you're saying brigade, I believe your story. I believe your aging backwards story. <laughs> yeah, that, that checks out because yeah, yeah. you said brigade. Yeah. But um, Dean, the, uh, we call him Dean the Jelly Bean, Dean the Saltine. Dean <laughs> goes, just anything that rhymes. Really. Yeah. Dean goes, they're dead. Yeah. He's and everyone's kind of like, uh-huh. And then, and then he goes, blood in the water. <laughs> blood in the water. And Renee, bless her heart, just goes like, all right. And yeah. like, let's move on. All right. Dean's right, but let's move on. <laughs> Dean's guess is the closest to accurate. Can I say <laughs> something, Rory? Because this is the funniest thing that's ever happened, is Dean's right. That's the funniest that's every joke is just trying to get to this joke, yeah. the truth of this joke, that the kid is right. He is we right. did just sing a song <laughs> about dying monkeys yeah. one at a time. They have to Celebrated watch. it. The last monkey watched nine of his brothers get snapped up. <laughs> yeah. Did he, was that a suicide? He like, was he like, could've I gotten can't away. live without that. He's like, I got to go in. Yeah. And that would be funny. The last little monkey. He was constantly like, guys, should we get out of here? He should was we the go? one. After the first one, he goes, I think this I think is not. I think this is a bad situation. This isn't the place to hang. Every, these are riddled. Yeah. These waters are riddled. Yeah. With, with alligator. With alligator. 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 <laughs> and I, I just watched my dad die, blood in the water. My whole family. Dean's right. Yeah. That's like when kids just point out how fucked up shit is. Good for him for also doing the math. Uh, very quickly with blood in the water. That's blood like, in the water. That yeah. means he was picturing it. Yes. There's no line in the song. This that song goes, is not easy for Dean. <laughs> that might be. You might have been at the last monkey song. That, that might, was. That and, might not happen it again. Occurred to Renee like I don't Renee's know. like, oh yeah, maybe this isn't. I think we just retired the monkey yeah, song. Yeah. But I mean. Because uh, at least monkeys on the bed, they're just going to the doctor, and the doctor said no, know, more, no more no more jumping on the bed. You go to the doctor, and he goes, "This is pulp. Yeah, <laughs> you've brought me the remains of what was <laughs> yeah, your yeah, brother. Yeah, 
but I can't yeah. mend pulp. This, yeah. They're like, what if we bring you He's the pulp gone. of nine monkeys? They're could gone. You, could you sew that into one? <laughs> into one like big a monkey? A Frankenstein? Yeah. We have ten dead to monkeys. To avenge their death? Could they have to be like big a, enough? Like a Voltron of dead monkeys to yeah. avenge and kill these alligators? Yeah. <laughs> but I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. The biggest joke is like how hard, and I don't say this bleakly, yeah. but this doesn't work. Look at that song. Yeah. The alligators are eating monkeys. That's just how it is. That's life. That's it. Yeah. I'm not even saying like, so that excuses us. It just, it's just what's happening. Dean's innocence is already erased. That's it. He's seven. Yeah. Did he, he have just a cigarette going at the time? It's like the dead. Blood in the water. The dead. <laughs> the dead. Dean. Contaminated waters. But isn't that what's cool about smoking? I'm not saying you, I, in fact, I think it's fucking disgusting. I smoked briefly with a girl who it with is that very same girl. cool. It is very cool. There, it what's looks cool about very it cool. is you're going, uh, I know that it's blood in the water. Yeah. Everyone who's not smoking is going, the monkeys ran away. The smoker goes, blood in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dean. Yeah. They've accepted it. Like when kids point out, like what you ever see an unhoused person with your daughter and, and they're just like, what is this? Yeah. And we're just like, we just erase that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let me teach you how to erase that. Yeah. We, we, or death or what a hamburger is. We, we, yeah. We talk about it. We talk when we see uh, anybody out there um, that's unfortunately having to live on the street or whatever the condition might be. Like we chat about it and it's the, bleak. I, I, it's bleak. I, I have a thing of like feeling, this is funny. I had a, I have this need to just tell her the truth, which I think in its concept is right and good. Yep. But there's an age for certain truths. And so yep. similar to this Dean story, we, my wife and I were like, do, is it time that we watch Willow? Cause I love Willow. Oh, and I was like, she's seven and a half. And I was like playing back in my head and I go, I, when it came out, I was like, I know I saw it in theaters. I was, I was like, about I, that age. Yeah. And I was like, I think, I, I think it's fine. And Wait, so we start watching it going in the baby carriage. Yeah. So we turn it on and right away, uh, the old woman is trying to escape with baby, uh, Aurora or whatever her name is. Steals the baby. Steals the baby, trying to protect her. And the two monster dog things are after her. And we're watching this, and my daughter is like a little frozen. And then the they put she puts the baby in the basket and puts her down the river. Yeah. And then the two dogs attack the old woman and kill. And her. and it, and she's gone. And we look over. My daughter is pouring tears. So my wife goes, "Turn it off right now." I turn it off, and we we're like, "Are you okay?" And she was like, "She's like, what happened to the old woman?" And I, being who I am, I go, they killed her. She's dead. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't not tell her the absolute truth in that moment. I was like, she needs to know. Okay. Look, I'm with you. Turn yeah. it off. Yeah. Part of me goes, is that the worst thing you can do? Because that's death and you never got to resurrection. You yeah. never got to see the baby. Yeah. But maybe it's not time. Well, my it wasn't time. And my wife, when I go, she's dead. They killed her. My wife was like, like, I don't, why? Buddy. And I'm like, because that is what happened. But then I was like, but also she's the first hero of the movie. I was like, without her, There's it's no all over. I go, it's all over without her. Because I go, Jack, she, you go, don't forget. Yeah. The monsters could have got the baby yeah, too. Yeah. That I go, could have happened. I know. And I wanted to be like, I understand the movie <laughs> is called Willow. But it should also be called whatever her name was because she really kicked off any chance of saving yeah, the world. It starts with she her. She started it all, and that none of that is working. She's oh like, why did they God. kill her? And when I was like, ah, it's complicated, but there's a lot of fun in the movie. And we're like, all right, we'll come back to this. So now any mention of Willow... Uh, in any context or anything about Isn't it, there my a daughter's new like, series no, there's a new series. So my, she sees buses with Willow. My daughter is like, no. And like I being me cannot help every now and then just randomly in my house. It, it, I, I don't, I don't have an example of what the context of the conversation is, but every now and then just randomly, I'll just go. Remember when those dogs ate that woman <laughs> to your daughter? <laughs> I can't. I can't do it. That's it'll be like someone just said something. Long pause, and I remember what the dog said. That's our job. I can't That's not our job. Do it. In fact, Dean 
is the comedian. Yeah. Dean is the comedian. <laughs> right. Like we're all whistling in the dark to a certain extent. And the tune that comedians <laughs> whistle right. is we're in the dark. Guys, we're in the dark. We're in the dark. Like yeah. this, like instead of denying it, there's a pleasure in leaning into blood in yeah. the water. It's blood. In the, those those think, dogs ate the woman. I think we have a thing where we, you know, it, where it, it's, my wife always be like, if I said something to my wife and a friend is over and I'm saying something that I know that they'll like laugh at and then they laugh. And my wife will be like, don't egg him on. Don't, you've heard this. We've all heard this. Like, don't egg him on. Don't be his audience. And I think what is so funny to me is that, like, even when there isn't the audience, like me saying randomly, those dogs ate that. Remember when those dogs ate that woman? It's Feel because me. I know if this did have an audience, that would kill. Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's so weird, and I think what we get misinterpreted and we get labeled psychotic, and I don't think it's totally off, is that my wife is there going, yes, but you're saying it, and there isn't an audience. And I'm like, I, I know, and you you can't be the audience because it requires you to go, that's yes, a part that's your part. <laughs> that's part. You're playing your part. <laughs> I go, you I go, <laughs> but if someone did see that, if their cameras were going, this gets a laugh. Like it is <laughs> funny. And yeah. you're part of it. Yeah. You not like it. And she's it like, why not it? just not do it? And I'm like, because I don't, I go, because the, I, because I want to be in the audience. And this is what I want to watch but someone. Then, go, this that woman. <laughs> I want to see that in a thing. But is there anything worse? I don't know. Is that me? Is there any, just making sure that's up. <laughs> is there anything worse than being like, those dogs didn't eat that woman? Because she right. saw it. I know. And so she knows. So you want an ally that yeah. goes like. They were playing with her. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted to they play with her. They tickled her. Yeah, they were having fun. They tickled her. And the then very next scene, someone gets stabbed with a sword. Is she's true? never seen that before. Is that true? No, but it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I remember the orangutans. Like the orangutan All, creatures. The whole thing is Mad like. Mad Mardigan yes. steps in their poop. Yeah. I remember him stepping Those in Those things poop were scared. The, the trolls. Soft. Yeah, they're trolls. The trolls, yeah. I remember watching Beastmaster when I was like. Yes. Eight. Yes. And it was. I bet even younger. I bet you saw it yeah, even younger than that. I bet I did. Because remember there was a time when it was on HBO or TBS all the time. It was. All the time. And I remember I had to talk to someone about yeah. it. And all I remember was there was this one scene where there are all these guys in big leather cloaks. Like, like they look like death. Yeah. Like Grim Reapers. And someone runs and they run into one. And right before they hit it, it opens its arms, hugs her, yeah. and then lets out a bunch of goo. Yeah. Like just digests yes. them. Yeah. And I, what was I thinking? I know. And then the like the God, next I forgot day, about that. I ran so into the weird boy. I always needed the weird boy. Yeah. You know the weird neighbor boy? Yeah. I say this with love. Yeah. He was just kind of like he was a dean. Yeah. Blood in the water. <laughs> and I'd go <laughs> like blood in the water. And I'm over there trying to be, <clears throat> I don't know, Dennis the Menace. Yeah. <laughs> like I got a <laughs> slingshot and I'm trying to that's how I'm whistling through dark. But yeah. I need deans. Yeah. And I found this dean. And I go, I saw this, and he ran and digested it. And you know, you're a kid, and you're saying it's like it's awesome. Yeah. But underneath, you're also like, am I going to be okay? Yeah. And the kid went, sounds like you thought Beastmaster. <laughs> and the relief, <laughs> the relief that yeah. he had also seen it, yeah. he seems okay. And he knew. What I'm saying is so much of my life, including this conversation, is going like, there's a lot of blood in the water out there. And I don't just mean tragedies. Yeah. I mean... Sometimes I think about how the f my battery on my phone is just slowly dying. Yeah. I'll be pushing Leela at the park, and I, I remember, like, I have a tile, like that key ring yeah. to help me, and I'm, like, pushing her, and I'm, like, got to change the battery on my fucking tile. And I just kind of go, like, God damn it. Yeah. Like, this shit doesn't work. Yeah. Everything that's alive is slowly, and that can be what it is. Yeah. But I need to find a couple Dean the Saltines and be, like, Blood in the water, yeah. right? I need, <laughs> yeah. I'm, an, I'm not even just trying to yes and you. I get so much comfort when someone goes like, remember when those things ate the, ate the old lady? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise we're, all of the psychic energy required in the denial of death, that energy, this is yeah. Ramdas. now I'm just quoting Ramdas without saying it. He's like, can be used in other things. Yeah, yeah. Can be used to like enjoy the moment. 
Yeah. So when you say, remember when that woman, I go, oh, right, we're all sort of fucked. <laughs> yeah, right. Like we're all just sort of like the collapsing. Acceptance, the acceptance of it. And then in all that energy I was using to push the beach ball underwater, I yeah. just let the ball out, and now I have that freed up energy to be a silly bitch, yeah. to like clown around. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Right. Like not just deny, but like, why is it virtuous? To, well, I, I also can't to watch stuff. Suppress now. it. I can't, I can't watch like it. like I remember we were watching uh, season two of Mine Hunter, and I think it was episode two. I think, and it, they discover in the basement like this is where like a kid was killed, and like that episode ended. And I told my wife, I was like, it's just now occurring to me. I'm shoving all of this into my head. Yeah. I go, it's not already there. Yeah. I go, I I get it. I'm also attracted. It's like like the the faces of death. Yes, there is an attraction to wanting to see this extreme thing, even though you don't want to. Like yeah. it's why people say you can't look away from a train wreck, or you know what right. I mean. Like it's right. there is there is humanity in wanting to see the thing you don't want to see. I also think there's a deep psychological level where we're attracted to death because we secretly, unconsciously think we're guilty and deserve it. I think there's something going yeah, on. Yeah, and like also we should be annihilated. The fact that when you don't know when it's coming, you don't know what it'll be like. Yeah. So, it's so You're like up that's in the what air. it was like for them. It's hard to not. Have it's anxiety intel. about it. It's but intel. I, I think it uh I think like that. Like now imagine that all you're ever watching is like faces of death. And I was like, oh, this is what we're doing. We're always watching these crime stories. We're always yeah. watching something dark handmaid's, and drama. And constantly it's all handmaid's tale. Handmaid's tale. And yeah. then you're like, let me throw on even something like breaking bad, where you go, Yeah, but uh, you can separate from that story. You're still watching anxious. heavy. Yeah. You're still watching something heavy. And and you're putting it in your brain. And I I think it's why I don't really watch a ton of stuff because I think for it to be good, it need it does need those things. You need to like yeah. make me go, oh fuck. Yeah. Like, I, you need to do that. Yeah. And yet, so how many shows am I gonna watch where I step back and I go, you know, at the end of the year, I watched, you know, seven hundred hours. This many hours yeah, of tension of hard imagery. Let me what do you think of this? I think it's an extension of your brain's fucked up idea that dwelling on things helps. You know how when you're anxious yes. about something yes. and it's not helping and there is no solution, Same. but it's like one more time Same. around the barn, yes. one more time around the barn. Like it's embarrassing being human. If yeah. you could see how many times I'm like, this is helping. That's what I think so much of the news is. That's what yeah. I think so much of horror movies. I, I almost watched a horror movie last night because we're getting our butt kicked with Leela. She's yeah. just rocking us. I feel like I've been sick. How for old? She's a uh, four. Yeah. She's on, uh, like four and a half, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I've been sick for what feels like nine years. Yeah. She just brings home fresh disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Christopher Columbus. That's, <laughs> I didn't mean a smallpox. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I was trying to think of like a voyager. But it, do, it does. It did come out it, that way. But it does make sense. <laughs> it, 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 that didn't pop into your head as outlandish. <laughs> like it's not outlandish. It does I was make trying sense. to think of an explorer that goes to places and brings back diseases we yeah. didn't have. That's what I was going for. But. Your daughter is Christopher Columbus. You're Dean the saltining yeah. it right now because you're going blood in the water. That yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah. That happens. Yeah. And we're in yeah. taboo. We just tabooed. We tabooed. That's a taboo. Yeah. Uh, but I wasn't trying to make light of that. But I've been sick for like six years. Um, well, four years. Constantly sick ever since she's been going to school so for like two years. Yeah. And like she just doesn't sleep. Uh, and we, we're just getting rocked. So last night I came as close as I've come to watching the knock at the cabin. Yeah. Because, because I was like, you know what it was? I used to think that people that watch horror movies, I'm like, oh, these depraved, not really. Yeah. But let's let's give this voice its due. These depraved, like sort of low class, low rent <laughs> idiots <laughs> that to be titillated need to see like someone's jugular yeah. drained in yeah, real yeah. time. Like yeah. that's the only thing that'll get their attention. Yeah. You yeah, can't yeah. just watch the born supremacy you need someone's <laughs> eyelid being peeled off by a clown yeah and then roaches being fed up their nose or whatever the fuck i but last night i was in such that's all dismay. so specific i know that was very specific <laughs> i was in such dismay that i was like and i, I want to put this back to you parenting is so much harder in in ways that i didn't expect yeah that at the end of the day i'm so drained that i was like no i want to watch a horror movie because my own state yeah. is sort of like ground up, sick, tired. And really what it is is a, a feeling of hopelessness, meaning like, there, and it's going to be this way tomorrow. Yeah. And it's going to be this way 
for, and then she has two weeks off, and then it's just right. gonna be like. By the way, I I do want to say, this, lovely, Lam she's my life. Yes, she's my life. Yes. And last night I was like, I'm either gonna eat an entire pizza. Yeah. Which I didn't do, and I'm proud. I'm still proud of that. Yeah. Or I want to watch. M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cat. I want to see Dave Bautista to be a scary neighbor. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, that'll be so uh, bombarding yeah. that I won't be thinking about my reality. It right. actually made me, this isn't virtue signaling, it made me understand why do people love horror movies? It's probably because they're having a rough time. The escape. The escape. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, Ted Lasso, by the way, yeah. last night Val did the best Ted Lasso burn. She goes, I, I'm not watching the new season. And, and she was like, Ted Lasso's like, you know that feeling when you eat a jelly bean and you think it's cinnamon, but it's actually cranberry? <laughs> it's like, that's that whole, <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. that's that whole show. And everyone's yeah. just kind of like, yeah, it is like that. It's like, it's that feeling when you want a Reese's Pieces, but it's a Skittle. <laughs> it's actually a lemon Skittle, but you thought it was Reese's Pieces. Ooh, that'll wake you up in the morning. All right, Ted, that's not enough. That's, that's not, it's not enough for a lot of people. At the end of the day, for it's not enough. People. Oh, for, for a second, I thought you were just a short-necked giraffe. That's not <laughs> enough. They need guts and blood and screaming. Because yeah. Ted Lasso in a windbreaker being like, Someone needs to die. Someone needs to die because I'm not distracted <laughs> right. enough by a man in a mustache being like, yeah. Ooh, I got a nose tickler. Yeah. You know when you get a nose tickler and you feel like you're going to sneeze, yeah. so you kind of make sneeze face? It does feel good, though, when that is enough. When you're like, this is plenty. During the quarantine, that uh, was plenty. It was plenty. That was plenty. I, I That's think all I'm, we wanted because the life life was a horror movie. Yeah. So we wanted. I think I'm more that. I'm like, give me just a a smatter, a me smattering, just a slight smatter of entertainment. I, yeah, I don't need. I get it. I don't. We don't got to go too deep. Now, granted, I love the deep. I love those things. But we know it, that when about I'm at you. home, you love the deep. I, you know, what? I, I, if I'm on a plane, give me what you got. Yeah. But if I'm at home, and and my wife is like, let's watch something. I'm like, I don't want to. Now, if you said, here's a 15-minute episode of I Think You Should Leave, yeah, then I'm all in, and I'll watch the whole season right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you said, let's watch the exact same amount of time of this very well-done, mind-blowing drama, I'm like, I can't digest it. It's I too much. You're full. I can't do it. I'm full. I have a bit that is so, it's, in, it's I'll just say it. It's inspired by you. I go, <clears throat> you know why I won't cheat on Val? Because I'm full. <laughs> I'm full. It's not the fidelity. It's not even that I'm not attracted to other people. It's that sex is only part of the night. The rest of the night, she's laying on the silk yeah. sheets going like, I've always been afraid of the sea. <laughs> Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I can't listen to any stories about your childhood. Yeah. I'm full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how you feel yeah. about TV. <laughs> that's I can't. I with movies and shows. That's how I feel yeah. about Game of Thrones when they're like, I'm from Isildur. And I'm like, I don't know. I know. I don't know where the valley is. Is. Yeah, I've lived in Los Angeles for 20 years. Yeah, still not entirely sure where do, the valley is. I want to do something better with my time. That, like, I think when I say I'm not going to watch something, I do feel like I'm making a good decision mentally. Yep. Um, but then I'll just fucking doom scroll Instagram, and yep. I'm like, I wish I would go read. <laughs> I wish I would do can anything I, can I more say beneficial. Can I? I'm going to offer something. Yeah. You want to want to read. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. It's not that you want to read, because you don't. Yeah. You wish, you know when you feel- well, I want to want, because then I would do it. Yeah. I would go, all right, great, now we're doing it. But those moods that we get in where your brain is rested, usually when you're rested. Yeah. And you have a little time. Yeah. Sometimes I have, I'm rested and I have time, and I just, I'm staring down the barrel of 12 long hours alone, <laughs> and I do dick. Yeah. And some days I wake up and I feel like a, a, a young- uh, Thomas Edison. And yeah. I'm just like fertile. Yeah. And I read. So what I don't really want free time. I want to want to live. I want to like, yeah. I once took a micro at this house. I took a microdose of LSD and I got in my bathtub yeah. and it says tiny little bath. I was wearing my pants. I got in my bathtub. Good. Noted. It, it's just like, <laughs> if you saw that in a movie and a guy took LSD and got in his bathtub in his pants, you'd be like, it's not really like that. Yeah. Cut to me wearing <laughs> pants in the bath. But only because you're like, I saw this once. <laughs> I'm mimicking television <laughs> art and I'm aware of it. It's because I got in the tub just for the sensation of getting in the tub. Yeah. And then I was like, just turn on the water. Yeah. I was like one of those beautiful moments where you're like, pants can get wet. Yes. Like will you fucking lighten up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. exactly the feeling. Yeah. By the way, it's like this freedom of like, yeah. Oh, pants can't get wet. Yeah. Pants can't get wet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
And then I Val go, came home. She goes, I'm full. I'm just so full. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> pants can get wet. Yeah, I'm in a tub with clothes on. I'm full. Pete. I'm going out. <laughs> I'm going out tonight. She's going, did you watch that? Did you watch that <laughs> SNL sketch called uh, Straight Straight Guy Friend? Uh, no, it's I don't hilarious. Think so. Introducing Straight Guy Friend, and he's just like he doesn't talk. He, he's <laughs> the best part is he's like uh, you, you tell him you're going out of town for six months, and he's like, you got to do it, live your life. <laughs> like he, he doesn't care <laughs> at all. That's what Val will leave and just find like a ham and egg yeah. regular guy that's just like. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> and she'll love it yeah. instead of this madman in the tub. I love that. But when I was in the tub, I was like, "You don't want, you don't want uh, to take a bath. You want to want to take a bath." Yeah, like the feeling of freedom. Yeah. and anything is possibleness is actually what you want. Does yeah. that make sense? Yes. And it's when you're in that place is when you could read. You could take a bath with your yeah. pants on. It kind of doesn't matter. You're just aware yeah. of the infinite potential of every moment. And you're hungry for it as yeah. opposed to scared of it or retreating from it. Yeah, That's yeah. what we're actually after. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. I have been doing uh, extremely cold showers. Okay, only. welcome to the show. Only. You're the first guest to bring up cold exposure. Is this true? High foot five. I'm not. I'm not, am I? No, I always bring it up. Oh, great. I'm a huge cold exposure. I, I have been doing it. I have not had a hot shower outside of like sensory deprivation tank post shower. Yeah. It's hot. All of my showers have been uh, just cold water only. Tell me everything. And I, it has changed my discipline on everything. I've gotten off coffee. I've gotten almost completely off booze. But w I was, I was hard on booze. Really? Way down on I booze. I never thought of you as a booze. I, I mean, because I'm not like belligerent. I'm not like a drunk or anything. But like yeah. literally wanting two cocktails a night because I'm bored. And I'm like, this will make me happy. The making the drink, the drinking the yeah, drink while yeah. jazz is playing and a That's candle's right. lit. Yeah, yeah. I want this space. Yeah. So I'm addicted to the, what it is. Yeah. Um, Ritual. Uh, pot. I've been do. I, I, the last time I got high is a month and a half ago. Really? Yeah. All, all of these things. Um, because of cold showering? Well, I wanted to get and then off the podcast just cuts off like the like the finale <laughs> no of the Sopranos. Out. Wait, Next week, wait, how did you <laughs> bong, buy some me undies, yeah. motherfucker? End the show. I've been doing some cold plunge, been doing the cold showers, and it's it's gotten me to discipline in those other things. And Tell I, me, what what is your theory on that? I think it's because the cold shower, one being mentally and physically beneficial. I was not sleeping for like two weeks and I've not, and not that I'm a great sleeper, but this was an extreme. And I was like, I know that I'm not physically active enough. I know it's my diet. I know it's anxiety about this tour coming up. I know it's anxiety about many things, many stresses. And I, I was like, Oh, I, I I'll just focus and try to get some sleep. It wasn't happening. And then I just said, I, I need something extreme. And so I went to take a cold shower and it's awful. <laughs> Who told you? I, I've, I, you Who know, on Instagram, you? you see posts and stuff yeah. about it. So, and also, I've Isn't seen. Isn't it funny for all the evil? <clears throat> and yeah. I'm with you. For all the evil. There's good and evil. Every once in a while, it goes it's like, both. hey, this will change your life. I, I like, follow God a lot damn of. It! Yeah. I follow a lot of like painters and I get on Instagram and I'm like, I get when people doom scroll, but I'm legit. This person made a video of how they made this painting. Yeah. And I'm in, I'm like, if this were a TV show, this is all I would watch. Yeah. I, to the point where I'd yeah. be a couch potato yeah, watching yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah. watching, even if it's just pictures of paintings, I'll yeah. watch that. But the, the cold shower, getting into it uh, was miserable the first four times. and But I, I made myself do it. So I was very proud that I made myself do it. And I didn't talk myself out of it because I'm so good at that. That's the whole thing. And then after the fourth one... I found myself kind of craving it and having a little bit of an addiction of like. As you're talking about it, yeah. I wish I would love it right now. Yeah, like waking up in the morning, yeah. I'm like, I can't wait to. First thing, I get all the shutters open and I make, I try to make sure, you know, my daughter, I, I go in her room and open the windows and turn off the sound machine and the nightlight to let her slowly wake up, and I do the same. Uh, in in the bedroom to like get people kind of stirring I and just then said the stupidest and let out a little yeah, toot. I fart her, a little uh, bit just, just, just to give toot. her the scent. To like, hey, that'll move. That'll inspire just, motion. Just something to say, get out of yeah. here. Just a little yeah. or a good catchphrase of ah, brother, and then she just gets under the covers. 
Uh, but I get into the freezing cold uh, shower. Absolutely love it. In there for less than a minute. I'm taking, I'm still doing shampoo. I'm still conditioning if I need. I'm still doing soap. I'm doing, I'm doing what you do. Yeah. But I'm in the shower and I'm getting better at my breath under the cold conditions. Yep. But I am instantly wildly energized. Yep. And because of it, that good feeling makes you go, well, don't lose this good feeling. And you know how you'll lose it is, uh, you know, e- eating too much meat or meat in general, mm. eating too much sugar or mm-hmm, sugar in mm-hmm, general. Mm-hmm. I, I've heavy booze. De- yeah. Co- I don't need co- Once you do those cold showers, you realize you don't really need coffee. I still go to coffee shops and I get a decaf. Mm. And I used to make fun of people that did that being like, mm-hmm. just why are you coming here and spending money? Because I still like the, the candlelight and making the drink and yeah, sitting. Yeah, 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 I yeah. like what yeah. the space, I like what it is. No, human beings need cues. I and love this it. Is a cue. Life is learning to tolerate and merge with and celebrate, uh, uh, what is the word? Turbulence, like, yeah. like discomfort. Yeah. So I, I'm huge into this. And every morning when you do it, you're, you're, you're setting a standard of like, I can teach my body to not retreat from discomfort yes. and go and get, I know this is like kind of a cliche, but like get curious about it. Yes. Can I mind over matter this? Yes. I just had friends visiting me oh, this past weekend and I was like, let's get in my cold plunge. They wanted yeah. to. Yeah. And it was guys and guys are usually, everybody can do it obviously, but men in particular, more than women that come to my house want to get in the cold plunge. And, yeah. the, and I, I love that. I've never, I love that. I've never been like, very identified with masculinity in general. Yeah. But I was like, this is awesome. Like, we're going to do this kind of like weird rite of passage. Yes. Three yeah. dudes. Yeah. And it was raining. Yeah. So it was like a Scottish morning, overcast is and raining. Is your cold plunge, it's, if I'm on your back porch, it's yeah. over here? Yeah. It'll be out past the pool? Yeah. Okay. It's right by the, the hot yeah. tub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you saw it. And we got in it, and I tell, I always tell people the same thing. I'm like, you have to tell yourself you love it. Yeah. So, like, which is crazy. But Talk- you know what no one believes? No one believes you when you say it takes 10 seconds of confidence and courage. Yeah. Because after 10 seconds, you will be shocked that you're fine. Yeah. And that your breath is, it takes 10 especially, seconds. Es- especially in, in the shower. Breathe deep, breathe deep, breathe deep. Yeah. And you go, we're oh, fine. Okay, I'm we're good. fine. That's okay. absolutely right. The shower yeah. is harder than the cold plunge. The- Getting the water all around you. I yeah. go to like here. Yeah. Getting the water all around you. Makes it easier. easier to cope with. Then little bits of the water torturing little you. Dee-dee-dee-dee. It's a little more torturous. Interesting. Yeah, but it's colder. Yeah, a shower yes. I think only gets to like. It can only get 60? so cold. It can only gets so cold. I get it. I'm a connoisseur. Yeah, I go to hotels. Like yeah. I, I'm shooting this thing in Toronto. The Toronto cold water. Yeah. Fucking cold. Bliss. It's so cold. It's real snow. And you, it's re- it's melted it's snow. It's from a glacier. It's from a glacier. <laughs> it's cascading off it's of a hockey It's glacier shavings stick. that they slide into your bathroom. And you know the colder it is, the more high you get. Yeah. So this is like a really, and I always tell it's like a healthy addiction. And in the cold plunge, it takes 90 seconds, they say, before you are not in pain. Yeah. But like. I don't think that's true. I think it's so much faster. How cold is your cold plunge? It's 98. It's a hot tub. Because <laughs> for where I'm, mine is at 39. You get in 39, yeah, it it's takes 90 be, seconds. It's supposed to, to get be 39, to right? Yeah. Um, and how long are you doing it? Well, now, because I'm so used to it, I have to go five minutes. So, because I've read you need 12 total minutes a week. Cube? I don't know who said it. Huberman? It, Did you know who I meant when I said Hube? No. <laughs> it's some doctor. She said yeah, yeah. 12. Maybe Hube was it. quoting him. I heard it was 11 or 12 per yeah. week. Do you do that? Do you try to stick to that? I do solo coldy showies, and I do, do you when, <laughs> when I get in the cold plunge. This is why people won't try it. I, I can't do coldy showies. <laughs> <laughs> There's blood in the wadi showies. <laughs> blood in the showies. Blood, Dean, <laughs> blood in the water. Yeah. When you, uh, I have to do five minutes, and then I get in the hot tub. Yeah. Uh, and it's it. I call it the full body jizz. Everybody knows this. They've heard yeah. me talk about this before. Yeah, yeah. But it's the best feeling in the world. I will do so right now because we're gonna buy the cold plunge. Yeah. I've been getting in my unheated pool during the winter. There you go. And it's been great. Yeah. It's definitely not in the 30s. I'm certain. Yeah. But it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've gotten very good at getting in. I set the timer and I sit there, motionless, meditative, breathing through the nose, nice yeah. and deep. Yeah, yeah. Four minutes. Four minutes. And I do nice. it three times a week. And I get out, I make sure the towel is on my back porch. I don't have anything near me. And I stay in the wet and the cold 
which is now not cold because you're, yeah. you're now actually getting warmer. Right. And it's very bearable. Um, I get out and I try to stay in that for as long as possible because it's also uncomfortable. Although when you get out, when you get out, well, just because you're wet, because I don't good. love being wet. I'm going to give you another just and then we'll move on because some people are like, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> so you talk about this every episode. No, no, it's just, I'm just thrilled that it came up because yeah, I love yeah. talking about it. Yeah. They say move. So even if you're in a cold plunge, oh, move if around. you hold still, interesting. Th- you build a thermal layer. Yeah. <laughs> so if you really want to make it difficult, which you so do, move around. you have to move. So if you're so in the incredible, pool, the move last around. time I did it, I was inspired to move around. I was like, I really <laughs> should get in here and swim. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, should. I'm going to do that next time. Yeah, I love that. And so you got off of all of those things. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Because I was interested in your relationship with weed. And I also want to talk about your painting because uh, uh, people, well, we Instagrammed it. I don't know if everybody saw that, but I love your painting so yeah. much. You and bought I also, one. I know. And, and we <laughs> it's a part of the tour. We yeah. This is our Scoville. <laughs> we love it so much. It's really a joy to me. And then I also want to talk about balance like showbiz life balance because i think that's one of the things that you and i yeah when i talk to people i'm like i don't really know anyone that is as um you could say actively pursuing some semblance of balance in the strange industry yeah or you could say reluctantly involved in show business and like self-promotion all that stuff yeah we'll talk about that but when we come back we'll talk first about weed because i'm very interested in in cold showers and then your relationship to that now so we'll be right back This episode is brought to us by our friends at Sunday's Food for Dogs. My dog, Brody, absolutely loves Sundays, and I love Sundays because it is healthy dog food that's actually easy to store, easy to serve, and Brody absolutely goes nuts for it. It makes me feel good to see him so happy and to know I'm taking care of his body. What is Sundays? Sundays is air-dried dog food made from a short list, very short list, of human-grade ingredients. Sundays was uh, co-founded by Dr. Tori, a practicing veterinarian. It contains 90% meat, 10% vegetables, and 0% synthetic nutrients. Besides USDA beef and all-natural chicken, you'll find digestive aids like pumpkin and ginger, plus disease-fighting antioxidants. Dog parents report noticeable health improvements in their pups, including softer fur, fresher breath, better poops. That's a big one for me. Better, easier to pick up. I'm going to add poops and more energy. I also love that it's basically like having a box of cereal in your pantry, but it's air dried, great human grade quality meat for Brody that I can keep with no refrigeration. In the past, we've tried to get him premium dog food. It took over our freezer. It took over our kitchen and it was nasty. This is like pouring him a bowl of cereal. Couldn't be easier. And it's still fresh dog food with zero prep, zero mess and zero stress. Uh, it's shelf stable, makes it easy to feed your pup, top quality food, and every order ships right to your door, so you'll never worry about running out of dog food again, which, let's be honest, is a huge pain in the butt. Sundays also cost 40% less than other healthy dog food brands because Sundays doesn't waste money shipping frozen packages, not to mention all the waste in the packaging there. Instead, you spend it on what matters, sourcing the best all-natural ingredients for your pup. We've worked out a special deal for weirdos. Get 35% off your first order on Sundays. Go to sundays dogscom slash weird or use code weird at checkout. That's S-U-N-D-A-Y-S-F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com forward slash weird. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. All right, everybody, let's get back to Rory's Global. And we're back. And we're back, folks. Do you want to drink that? That's for you. That's a magic mind. Speaking of... What does this mean? Good what addiction. It what does this mean? It's you shake it if if you're gonna drink it, shake it. It's just 35 milligrams of caffeine, so it's like a cup of tea. Oh, like maybe I shouldn't, because that's what I'm trying to get off of. All caffeine with the coffee. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, 35. Yeah, I'm 35 years old. You are not. No, 42. Well, I'm not gonna do it. That's fine. But I I love this bottle. It's got a little. And I love the name. Yeah. Okay. You don't have to love it. <laughs> no, I do. I like it's that it's matcha. Su- subtly sweet. You know how matcha uh, isn't like coffee. It doesn't like. It's not like putting uh, car jumpers on your nips. Yeah, it's very mild. But anyway, <laughs> I love the phrase "car jumpers." Car on jumpers your nips. on your nips. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how? Because when I listen to your improvised album, which is called Live. Yeah, it's both. It's kind of both because of the. Um, uh, uh, I guess the album would be called Live, but the documentary special that we did is kind of use of both because of the documentary part of it about being about Bob Wood and the relapse theater. Right. Yeah. 
in the track, I didn't know you put in these sort of like sketches. It's really funny and it's very telling that the the uh, white noise radio. I love that you DJ. listen to it because yeah. it, it exists out there, and I feel like no one listened to it or. There was just no word about it. I I didn't want to I didn't want to title it the same as the documentary special yeah. that was on YouTube, and uh, people were like, "No, people should know it's the same." And I go, "But but while it's the same concept, it's not the same right. material. About seventy five percent is not the same as right. stuff that went in right. the thing, you know." Yeah, it was. I, I don't want to make you feel bad, but it was also not easy to find. I, I know. I, I typed it I into my search, and oh, it was like, it "Kills me." You mean this record? I'm so happy. And with I was it. like, "I know." There's another. I had to go on Apple Music to find it. Yeah, For some yeah. reason, Spotify was like, "You mean this old Sp- one?" Well, Spotify took, took my stuff off. off. Mine yeah, too. I think they maybe put it back up some now. But I switched up. over to Title. I was like, "You don't pay people." I'm going oh, to Title. Oh, I didn't know. I, it's a little more. It's a little more expensive, but Jay Z. I don't mind it. Ba- Bart Coleman got me into it. Okay. And I was like, I'm going to go title. They pay the artists, so. Really? Great. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I should write that down. I just remind me at the end. <laughs> just re- anyway, so in the interstitial, the the DJ, who is the DJ? Ben Roy uh, is the first one. Yeah. It's very funny. And he says, uh, you know, uh, Rory is improvising his, uh, this record and he's very high, uh, has a drug problem. <laughs> and I was like, that's really interesting because you wouldn't, we don't make the blood, that's a blood in the water joke. Yeah, You're going yeah, yeah. Like, Rory, you also say he's improvising. Isn't that just a lot of talent? It's also very lazy. <laughs> yes. It's like this way of calling out. Yeah. Like on one hand, and I, I, I think I understand all this because I, I, I like to do stand up in the same, in a similar way than you do. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's remarkable. It's also lazy. Yeah. Um, and you're stoned, but do you have a drug problem? So <laughs> right. what, where are you at with, with weed now? I mean, I, I will say, and maybe people who do drugs always say this, but I don't think I ever had a drug problem i certainly didn't have any drug problem with mushrooms because it's too much work it's too much yeah. mental gymnastics that you could it's, be addicted to like facing their relationship with their father yeah. <laughs> in the form of a cloud <laughs> right yeah, yeah. like who's like let's yeah. do that every let's day let's do it all the time it also doesn't work right yeah if you do it on monday on tuesday it won't work right like you still have the antibodies i believe yeah Keep and then going. uh you know so i never had an issue with that and then pot and these are the only two drugs i've I've really done, but pot I I have and did smoke for a very long time. Well, I remember I saw you at um comedy what is it called? The outdoor one? Doesn't Supernova? Matter. Supernova. Yeah. So there we were, and I hadn't performed in six months. You hadn't performed in six months. Yeah. Uh, or whatever it was, lockdown. Yeah. And I'm nervous, you're nervous, and and I saw you spark up a J. Yeah. And I was like, I sometimes my jealousy yeah. gets filtered into incredulity, meaning I'm like, I can't believe he's doing this. But then there's also <laughs> part of me that's like, I can't believe he's doing this. So yeah. it's like both. But there you were, rusty, yeah. going on stage, stone. So back then it still had a certain magic. Yeah, to it. I mean, I think the magic is still there. I still love it. I still love going on stage uh, high so very much. It's It's a lot of fun. But it's also you get two different products and i think i i think both products as arrogant as a sound i think both products are good i think when i'm high um for the most part when it's good i am more exploratory i will i know yeah go i'll take turns i would have never taken that sometimes are good for right then and only right then yeah sometimes the perfect sentence comes together where i go that is now in the act forever that is great and then sometimes it goes nowhere and you you tank a little bit, which you're also likely to do with being sober and have written out a great hour. You know, right, you could right. still tank it. Right. So, you know, and then if I'm sober, I'm a little tighter and I'm a little more in the in the uh, mind frame of, of spotting callbacks and remembering what I was just talking about. And if I do go off on a tangent, I remember how to get back to where I was, where if I'm high, I can't go back. Right. And the best thing for me to do is just keep going down the road and right. just let that be the show. And then, well, this is again, something that you've influenced in me is like, don't get scared that it didn't go anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Because if it didn't go anywhere, that is the joke. Yeah. Right. I yes. mean, you and I both do that. You and I also do so. We have the same blind spot. And I think I already told you this because I, I I recognize it in me when I saw you at my last Largo. Sometimes you'll forget, or I'll put it on me, and yeah. I know you, you'll relate. No, this is real. I forget <laughs> a key line, a yeah. key element. Yeah. And then I start going into the bit because I just can't wait to get to the funny part. Yeah. But I didn't say, like in, in your special, 
You sort of do it. It totally works out. Yeah. But you don't say that a self-driving car yes. killed a person. Yeah. You just say <laughs> these computer cars hit. It, yeah. There was a fatality. Yeah, I know. And it's like kind of like I'm with you because yeah. our brains are wired the same. I'm yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm going to, I think he means this and yeah. the audience is with you. And yeah. like only like three quarters of the way into the joke, yeah. which then becomes the joke, yeah. meaning the joke is that the comedian kind of forgot to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is titillating and a delight. Yeah. So it's not a criticism. No, I, I don't going, take this one. A self-driving <clears throat> car hit a person. Is that? Did you guys see this article? But yeah. you and I both, Val will be like, Pete, you forgot to say yeah. it was the president who sent back the tuna melt. Right, yeah, And yeah. I just start going like, are you guys here? I, are you hearing yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. then, but here's here's the, the true compliment is in that album and, and whenever I watch you, it's such a like... It's such a golden sword you've pulled out of a, out of the stone for all comedians <laughs> to learn from. And Berlant does this, and and Bo does this. There's others that do it, but yeah, it's yeah. like what's happening is okay. Yeah. And you go like you do like it didn't go anywhere. And the instinct to the performer is to let the audience then win. Yes. Have and power. make you sweat and yeah. be like, well, I wish that was better. Yeah. But you go like imagine if that's my special yeah. it's just a series of meanderings you keep opening the yeah. door and thinking they'll be and it's empty yeah. it's as empty as your grave and like you just dig, dig into it does that make sense yes absolutely and that is that's what i, I this yeah. is the compliment i was trying to pay you in the first half i was like this is what steve martin would be doing if he if he kept at it yeah, if yeah. he never became a movie star and was just pushing the edge of stand-up. I think that's a fine compliment. I think that's a great compliment. I appreciate that. And I feel that, that way Thank when you. I watch you, yeah. I, I think I I enjoy uh, the jokes not working. Um, I don't know when that clicked, when it clicked that the jokes not working is also a really fun place to go. And I think, and, and I don't know when it clicked. It's a spectacle. I don't remember who I saw where that, that moment of inspiration of realizing oh it's all it's all it's all just the show i think there i think it potentially you just said it. this is the show yeah i think there's something in when i went to uh the first time i i did uh dublin and i opened for dylan moran uh it, it was at the 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 uh, vodafone at the time vodafone comedy festival and i was you know he was one of the he's a huge name there he's a huge name and a lot of places, but he was a huge name there. And I, you know, I, I didn't know much about him. I didn't really know him. And I was like, Oh, we're in this bigger tent. He's clearly a draw. I'm doing like 15 minutes to kind of open it up. So I did my 15 minutes. It was fine. I had a lot of fun. I went into the crowd and I watched and I, I, as he walked out, uh, this guy yelled, I love you before he got to the microphone and he stopped and like looked at the guy and he had a glass of red wine, also something I hadn't really seen a comic go out with. Yeah. And he took like a sip of his red wine, put it down, still doesn't talk to anybody yet, and just goes, but what is love, really? And I was instantly like, I don't think that's a plant. I don't think this is his act. I think this is all right now. Yeah. I like, I yeah. believed it. And I was like, because the, 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 he's making this the show. He's basically And he's jumping. like, I'm going to get to where I get to, but I, I have something I can say. I have an opinion. I can go into this. And he goes into it. And this particular guy, who I b really believe was a genuine fan, every now and then would yell out something like, I love you again. And by the third time, this guy yelled out, I love you. And Dylan Moran was like, he goes, I know. He goes, but he goes, the reason we won't ever work is because you don't know how to share me. And that one sentence wow. made me realize that I was like, oh, all of these tracks, all of these like, oh, and this is where I make a joke about why Alice in Wonderland's a weird movie. And then from there, I say, I, I, the bathrooms are crazy. You know, like all yeah, the things yeah, that, yeah. and I'm not trying to rip on those topics. Those are, <laughs> those are fine topics and I love them. You're canceled but, for putting down topics. <laughs> yeah, but in my head, I was like, I keep looking at the show as, the, as though I am doing a set and that isn't the show. The show is its own living, breathing 
thing. Yeah. And instead of going, could you not heckle? I have an agenda. Instead, why not have this heckle be part yeah. of the show, be yeah. part of the story? Yeah. It, there's so much to gain from it. And it just made me realize uh, it, it, it wasn't the, it, it made me realize, take a deep breath and quit acting like this is a surprise. Yeah. And instead, perform as though you fully expected the sound to pop. You fully right, expected right, right. a phone to go off. You fully expected these things and make this the whole room because everyone is experiencing and hearing at the same time. And the last thing they want you to do is to yell because a glass broke. Like, come on, can we keep the... Like, they right, don't want right. that. Yeah, don't be the drunk dad driving to Disneyland. Yeah. God yeah. damn it! <laughs> right. I'll turn this car around! <laughs> right. Just go to Disneyland. Just go to Disneyland. There's be a detour. Chill. Be chill. We're still going to Disneyland. Yeah. It's all... You had to pull off the road and pull back on. My friend John Saroof, who, who taught me a lot about acting in college, told me a story. I don't know if it was him. I don't think it was him. He told me a story about seeing someone playing Hamlet mm -hmm. in some renowned theater, like the Globe Theater. Yeah. And it's the to be or not to be speech. And here's the guy. He's Hamlet. It's the moment every actor dreams of. And the crowd is riveted. And he's about to say to be or not to be. And some woman... And he was clear, he was like, this woman wasn't drunk or disruptive. She was so invested, she said audibly to be or not to be. Like, you know, you know what I mean? She yeah. was like, to be or not to be. Like she she was like, that's how she was participating with the show. And it kind of slipped out. Yeah. And instead of being mad, this woman just stole the greatest line yeah. from the greatest play yeah. for the greatest actor. And he gestured to her. He didn't pretend he didn't hear her. Yeah. He gestured to her and continued the monologue without that line, as if she said it. Yeah. He rolled with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, tis nobler, and just went with it. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's the whole thing. And That's what I got the, from your it story. It keeps the audience going, like, being like, What oh, are they? Good. I, I'll say this. I got into this, into comedy and art, because I, even though I'm sure people were trying to listen to me, I didn't feel heard or yeah. seen. And the longer I got into comedy, the more I realized, oh, I'm now comfortable enough on stage to see them. Yeah. I, like, pay it back. Right. Like, you've looked at me enough. Now the show is actually going to be, and I say it on, all the time on stage, I go, you're watching me, I'm watching you. Yeah. Like, like you guys are doing okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know what I mean? That's <laughs> right. a very Rory kind of thing. Yeah. But, like, to, to call <clears throat> out, this is our show. Yeah. We're making this show together yeah and when i see someone just doing their act to me that feels like a drunk relative who has purple lips yeah and isn't reading the cues that i'm an eight-year-old boy and i'm uncomfortable with how much spittle is hitting me right, right yeah yeah you know what i mean yes that is that yeah. energy that unconscious energy that so many grown-ups gave me as a boy was what compelled me to go like let's get into a fever pitch right of light and sound mm -hmm. where ideas are heard and then with that power you can start giving it back and then ideally at the end of the show everybody feels like they exist yeah does that make sense yes a hundred percent i think it makes it uh you know the the goal being how do we make everyone feel like they are right here right now and it's not like hey come to the sit here and get like lost in this it's like get here and just remember you're in here yes. you're not out there and i think that's that's what's so disturbing about uh the the, the you know it, it, there's more to like not wanting people to film because you haven't really worked on the material yet you don't want the the people to film because this then they leave. this is maybe not about you're being able to tether this to out there. To later. That's for me to do if I want to do it, if yeah. I want to film it, if I want someone to make clips out of it, if I want to do those things. But the whole thing is we're right here right now. It's why <clears throat> it's why I'm willing to bet 95% of comedians don't really like their specials because they don't feel like what it, what it actually is and what you actually do. And I think the... I say this a lot, and I do I do believe it, even though it's coming from someone who doesn't have the experience of playing gigantic venues. But I think the bigger the venue, the more separated I feel on my couch. Like, yes, I do actually want to see how you perform and what you do in a at, regular at show. Madison Square Garden. I do yeah. want to okay. see it. And I do want to sit there and wonder, 
what does that drug feel like and how fun is that paycheck i do want to know that i do want to know just it. calling it what it is yes I wow do. I every am. seat was 50 dollars. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes quick I, math yeah i would love or more sometimes yeah. 100 plus i want to know what that feels like to get that paycheck i want to know what it feels like to have those people i want to know is it annoying to know the people in the back think you can't hear them i want to know if you can actually get to a point in your set where they are all quiet, like a pin, they could hear a yeah, pin drop because yeah. they are so invested. I want to know if that, I want to know about that stuff. But when I am watching on my couch, if I really want to connect, I really believe the thing that a comic does, if it's filmed in a smaller venue, I think it does translate better, better like to the special. person on their couch. Like I yeah. do understand you go, yes, but if I film it at a notable theater, and I'm not saying I won't ever try to do that if i do do it but when you do it that's that's its own version of entertainment but when you do it at a jazz club yeah you know sarah or like you know how gerard uh gerard's last one you do feel more like you are at it yep. and so you feel like you can connect this is my own personal opinion you can connect with it in a different way say because you think you're there harsher yeah i've watched a lot of great hours make an ego choice for a big venue, which is just a, a, a... Oh, look, I can't know. It helps sell tickets. I get there's a promo to it. I get it. Yeah. But to me, it feels like a a trophy. Like, I did this, and I filmed it there. Yeah. And then you compare yourself to the other people that did it there, and you're like, and I did it. Yeah. And then you see, like, a bigger version, and it's like, I don't know. Was that the best? <laughs> yeah. Was that the best? But I'll also say, venue be damned. Maybe I'm completely wrong, and you can do a great special in a venue that has seven special audiences. Right, yeah, yeah. Maybe you can. Yeah. What I would say then is the job of the comedian is to, and every time I do a special, I try very hard to do this, is is warm it up yourself, get into it, do something to disrupt it because they're nervous, yeah. you're nervous, everyone's aware that here's the special version of this bit. Yeah. And that's the enemy of comedy. And that's what's so great about your riff specials is like, can we throw that away? Yeah. When did we turn this into a firing squad? Like, yeah. I'm going to stand here nervously and and hope I get the wording right? Yeah, I I hate it. I hate that element of it because that's not what, for me, that's not the product that I am making or that I do. I, there is a little bit of fun going, hey, don't improv improvise at all and take all these jokes and try to write them as tight as possible. I do love the idea of going i've gonna i'm gonna try to write it so tight i'm gonna drop things i love that i get this many people laughing at yeah because i want to now see can i write it so tight that i, I am that literally rolls. gonna do 60 minutes of hot this like i mean hot to where yeah. it's insane like i i i'm i'm trying to do that right now for this tour that's what i want to try that's to make. actually my favorite rory I, I love riffing, Rory. Yeah, but my favorite Rory is when you're doing titty fuck. When it's just <laughs> and trade it all for a three way. Those bits because yeah. you're doing it. You're still the same. And when I say clown, I mean you're free like yeah. a clown. You're you're still doing it. You're still in the room. Yeah. But like I love the bits. Yeah. I want I, the bits. I I love them. And actually, like sitting down. I mean, th this is what's bizarre is that I just this week went and sat down to really take a look at what this tour hour might look like. It starts in, in two weeks. Mm. And I just went and sat down to go, all right, all right, I know I'm going to open with this. And then so quickly I looked at other jokes I've been doing for years that are just like quick little things. And I was like, oh, this actually goes right after that. And it would be boom, boom. Oh, and this actually follows that. Like started putting the puzzle together of going, oh, I've been concocting yeah. all of the ingredients. I just haven't actually sat to see how where do they all fit in the That's recipe. That's my favorite because and I, it's fun. There's a lot of specials I watch that are, again, some of my favorite people to watch live, and you watch them on tape, and you're like, I wish they had put the puzzle together a little bit more. I know I'm kind of talking out the other side of my mouth. I was just talking about stay free, stay loose, have fun. Yeah, but like those first five minutes, can we make it? Can we make it fucking great? Can it lead yeah. to a big, a big? Yeah. Because you're telling the audience, you can trust me. If you yeah. make the mental effort to start picturing what I'm saying and locking into the premise that I'm introducing, laundromats are sexy. I don't care what you say. Yeah, you yeah. Just, okay. 
if you if I say laundromats are sexy, and I, everyone's going okay, I'm gonna, I'm it's it's not like you're studying, but you are lending effort, yeah, and trusting, and then it just ends with like I just like fucking socks, yeah. right? It, and then you go like they subtly learn like well it's not really worth it, I'm gonna pay less attention. Yes, yeah, yeah. I so I'm both. Yeah, I'm like be a silly bean, but I love that you're doing this because when I want when you do my Largo show, and you. Are like the Arnold Palmer. Yeah. Like I'm gonna riff around. I'm gonna be silly. <laughs> right. I'm gonna make fun of Pete. I'm gonna make fun, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm also gonna do. I'm sorry to keep talking about your titty fucking joke, yeah, but yeah. I love it. I'm like, that's it. Rory, where he can riff and knows that he can do the bit, is my favorite. Rory. Yeah, I, I, I love it. Uh, I love the ratio of it. I yeah. love the finding that Arnold Palmer's a great, great way to fucking <laughs> describe it. Well, he always dressed in two-tone colors. Yeah. What if that's what I mean? <laughs> and then I just go with it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's what I thought you were referring to. When it comes to showbiz and painting, something that you and I have talked about in life, the humiliation of, of, of touring, promoting, how difficult it can be yeah. when it's not selling out and the stress. Yeah. And, and like, I even have stress with this podcast. It's such a wonderful gig, but it's like booking guests and yes. and making sure we have episodes. Yeah. And we've, we've never missed a week. Maybe we've missed one week with a repeat or something, but like for the most part for 10 years. I know, it's crazy. It's been When you really consistent. start to think about it, you're like, oh, this is insane. And it gives me a lot of pleasure. Like I love banking and just having a couple, yeah. loading them in. And it's both. That's a great feeling. I love doing it. This is such a pleasure for me. It really is. Yeah. And there's also stress of like, how are we going to, and then you get the advertisers and all that yeah. stuff. There's all this stuff. Similar stand-up. So funny. I'm going to give you this thought. Sometimes I go like, I can't, I can't. Touring is just so stressful. Yeah. And then I go, if, if we were touring like our friend Nate yeah. Bargatze yeah. and every city... 10,000 people. Yeah. We wouldn't be like, this, this is a drag. Right. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's just the vulnerability of you put tickets on sale. Yeah. And there and and it doesn't sell out. Or you're just worried that it might not sell out. And yeah. then if you're like me, I guess I I will ingest that somehow. I'll be yeah. like, well, we had a good run. <laughs> yeah. You know what's so Interesting, and I I know uh, that me. this is true for you too. But I speaking for my my for myself, like I know that if I would just hit the road, it would be I I just know it because of the repetition and how I am. It would be the the best I ever was. I think in terms of just tight, fearless confidence was in two thousand six after I went on the road in Canada, and then did the Seattle comedy competition right after. And I ended up doing three straight months of road mm. where I was performing every single night. I came back feeling like a Jedi. And mm. it, that early in my career, I remember going, oh, it's, it's repetition. If you, if you are funny and you know you're funny, the jokes are going to come. But hitting that level of confidence was the first time I was like, oh, I don't even need the jokes. I'm just going to start talking and do whatever yeah. and make yeah. it fucking work. And right. it, it felt so powerful. And so because I know that's in my mind, I know that if I would get up all the time uh, and hit the road all the time, I don't know where I'd be or how I'd be doing. I think I probably would be less worried about like, how are the tickets? But right. I don't love it enough to go out and, and do that. I well, love to, doing other price, things. I'm, it, yeah. yeah, I'm also very much like, I do want to be on a TV show. I do want to be in movies. I do want to write a script. I do, and I understand that people who hit the road hard also end up in those places doing those things. But I, you know, I also want to direct. I want to produce. I want to see what that whole side of that world is like. And I also want to keep doing stand up, but I don't want to just hit the stand up. <laughs> yeah. I so hard. I'm not driven to do it. And I'm not saying if I went and hit the stand up, all those things wouldn't happen. They maybe would, but I'm just not so driven to want to have a new hour all the time. I mean, it's why I like going up and saying, hey, I'm improvising this whole set. And it isn't so that I will for sure go listen to it later and pick out stuff that is very much great material I could work on. Yeah. But instead, I I will sometimes go. That was that was tonight, 
and that's where it exists, and it's only tonight, and there isn't a recorded space of it, and I like that those people experienced it, and maybe they will be fans, or maybe they they won't be, but I I like that there isn't some... uh, there isn't some work to be done about it. I'm with you, man. There's something also, it's a life philosophy too. And that, that is where I don't, I wouldn't say I'm at odds with it, but like, so the, I told you there were three, three friends staying at my place this past weekend. And it occurred to me at one point, I was like, these are some of the most interesting people I know. Let's record a podcast. And I was like, I decidedly was like, Let's not record a podcast. Yeah. Like yeah, I didn't I mention know, it. To I them know what you mean. Because it was like this re- reclamation. I haven't done psychedelics, like a big dose of psychedelics in a long time, but I don't need to to have the revelation of like not every element of my life, no matter how much the culture would encourage that, yes. should be removed from me and then placed in a bakery shop window. Like yes. as as much of a here's the other side. A privilege it is that people would like to see you do stand up or or, you, or me do stand up yeah. or sell whatever idea or thought I have. There's something you kind of have to. This is the I say this a million times, but this is the sell your soul uh, story. Yeah, that's why that endures. Is we know there's a cost. Yes, and it's not just you know the volume of the other areas of your life get turned down when every night you're you know hanging out. With- <laughs> Yeah, at the <laughs> I was gonna say at the bon, bon Jovi, <laughs> <laughs> but like when you were in that tight spot where yeah. you were the best you've ever been, yeah. I'll speak for myself. The times in my life when I'm like, wow, I'm performing every night and I'm bulletproof. It's really hard for me to enjoy a sandwich. Like I just wanna, yeah. I just wanna decapitate audiences. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and count. And keep going, and, and just like, keep going, and keep going, and, and going. Look, it's become working. Become a machine, yeah. and it, and that's very appealing. And I'm not saying that that isn't super fun. At a certain point, though, and this will bring us into your painting, is that that relationship with you in a canvas has to be pretty pure, right? I mean, yeah, you're not getting a laugh for doing this. Yeah, you're, not, you're just listening to yourself. Yeah, I have to imagine you're listening to music. Tell it's me probably a bit meant. About- it's probably mentally uh, saved me in a major way because it's the first thing I've done that has not required any validation. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, everything I have ever done, it is the validation is required, or it's the, the reason, engine. The reason yeah. I'm doing it, the engine of it, and yeah. I. For this, that was that great bit. Imagine yeah. if you could time travel, but you still do stand up, <laughs> yeah, right. like going to different eras and still being like, "I'd like to feel, feel so desperate <laughs> approval in this decade." Yeah, it's so uh, it, it you know, I, and and I don't hate it. I love chasing that validation. I love, I love, uh, I love it. I do love it. It's a I, part I think of that's beautiful. It's a part of who we are. Just forgive it. Yeah, meaning forgive it, meaning. Don't judge it. Yeah. It's It's okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's honest. Yeah. It's how we feed our families. (laughs) Yeah. And it's, and it's really cool that our psychological, you could call it a deficit or you could just call it a soft spot or whatever also happens to be valued by our culture and feeds our families. Yes. A hundred percent. So we don't have to be sad about that. With the, with the painting, which I've always been very drawn to, I think I, I got into stand up or the thing that I was attracted to in stand up. Because I wasn't a musician, I wasn't in a band, I, I'm, I can't sing, all that stuff. But the idea of, like, the 60s, uh, beatnik culture, Bob Dylan, Greenwich Village, the traveling singer-songwriter, the, the, the Jack Kerouac poet, novelist, like, I love the, the arts, artsy idea of this traveling artist who has their thoughts and they don't need a I love that stand up needs a mic yeah not even always I love that it needs a stool fine you don't have one right. but it just needs whatever you thought of that's either in your back pocket or it's already up here and it's just you talking and that the full product doesn't really require a sound check it doesn't require yeah. it's it's I love that it's bare bones travel around get on a stage or not, if there isn't even one, and and give the product that is you to people. I love it, and I was always like, oh, that's what that's what really. Attra- I, there's something I always was attracted to about that, and it's what makes me love 
uh, the road and it makes me love this job. Mm. And what I realized, I I didn't realize this till till a couple years ago, was that the attraction I really have had that I never paid attention to was painters. And and more so than the singer songwriter traveler is that I think painters just seem to be the coolest people. That like a photo of Picasso in like his underwear in this massive space with all of these canvases that yeah, are yeah, you know yeah. who knows what they're worth at that time but right, you know now right. that room is a golden castle yeah it's Fort Knox yeah and he's yeah. just sitting there with like a cigarette being like. Oh, this one I did that five minutes ago because I was bored. And yeah. you look at it, and you and because it's Picasso, so he was like, "Yes, this red paint there, that's a painting." I love that. That, that I love that. That he, can because, be a thing because he got into his Seattle comedy competition place <laughs> of reps, right? Yes, and and removing all of the doubt and all of the impediments, yes. to actual artistic expression. The, something naked, something vulnerable, right? The thing that really took me, that really that pushed me into realizing all this was, you know, growing up when someone showed you abstract paintings, at least for me, I was always like, oh, fucking, oh, okay. So that's, the, they smeared some paint. Like what, yeah, this yeah. isn't a painting. And never felt like it was a painting. Now, I think it's more of a painting than <laughs> something that looks like a photograph that someone's like, no, I took three years and I painted this. I'm like not interested at all i'm interested in this thing that's just one color and it's right through the middle and there's and it and they maybe did it in less than 10 seconds right there's something i'm so much more attracted to and because of that the artists that 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 come with that and the imagery of them i just thought they they there was something so cool about them their aura they're almost i'm not here to play by your rules and i don't fucking care that you think this is shit yeah. This is fucking genius, and I'm a genius. And I, there's something so attractive about that confidence, as we're all attracted to confidence, but that particular kind really, really had something for me. And so that made me go, I, I want to make something and then step to the side for someone to take a photograph, and you can see on my face that I'm not here to ask you if you think this is good. Yeah, You can rip this up. It won't change how I feel. And I, it's so interesting that a bad joke that doesn't work, even though I know is a good joke, and you, you, we, we have these, you'll do a joke a hundred times. <laughs> you cannot understand why it does not work as well as you think yeah. it should because it's so good. And even though you still believe in it, you have to some you have to come to terms with the fact that the it audience does get to decide yeah. a little bit. And with painting... Someone could say it's a hundred people, the same amount of people that don't like that joke could tell me that this painting is so bad and it's awful. And I just would constantly look at it and be like, I don't know. I like it. I, there's something about it that right. I'm into and it can't, you can't harm it. You can't penetrate yeah. that feeling. And yeah. so that space has just been so fun to go into knowing that it's this freedom from validation that I didn't know I was craving so much. And yeah. I think what I love is that I love this painting validation freedom. And then I also love stand up where the audience does get to decide. It's a little bit Did more I of a bomb thrill. tonight? Yeah. <laughs> is this good? Like I kind of like it's both. more of a thrill. You can have both. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh I have two questions for you. One is a comment actually. It's it's that it, that to me mirrors the spiritual path. To me, spirituality is about finding a um causeless joy something that just is more sturdy. Yes. So this mirrors that. You're, 100%. You're finding yes. something that's a little bit more honest and not. I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, it's just this talk about a premise that wouldn't work. It's so weird that I'm a corpse, like I'm a dead person, mm -hmm. dead man walking. Yeah. I'm, I'm not long for this. I'm going to go. Yeah. And I perform for other corpses. And if they hate me, I'm <laughs> like, God, those corpses hated me. <laughs> Does that make See, yes. I can't. I can't even really make it hilarious. Corpse is very harsh. I just mean these impermanent things yeah. are feeling feelings as if what's happening is going to last forever. Right. When it doesn't. Right. The meaninglessness of it. It's And the freedom of the meaningless, not the, yes. the dread of the meaninglessness. Yes. But Eckhart, I've said this a million. I'll say it every time I think it, though. Eckhart Tolle suggests watching some, sometimes they just set up a camera in Times Square around the turn of the century. Sometimes they uh, frame correct it so it's not fast. And yeah. they'll colorize it. 
You can just watch dudes in bowler hats with mustaches and long coats and canes walking around Times Square, and you're like, what were they all worried about? Yeah. All, each and every one of them, there's something they're a little like, I have to get to the habitat. I think, that, I think the know? same is the same as now. That's it. That's what I'm saying. They're worried about the same as now, just their version of that's it. That's right. Yeah. And you can watch and go like, go and go into an apothecary and buy free cocaine or not. <laughs> that's silly. <laughs> right, right, but yeah. I mean, like live your life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Why do you care? It's different. What I'm saying is what is it? It's like an ice sculpture caring about another ice sculpture thinks it's not a beautiful ice sculpture and they're both just melting. Yeah. Like what a waste of your ice time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. So your purer relationship with yourself, yeah. which is really what's happening. Yes. You're painting from your a deeper part of you. Yeah. Let's not say deeper, but a de a true I, part I, of you. I, I think it is. I think it is a deeper play. It's very meditative. It's very uh honest. It's very honest. And it's also it it's not easy in the sense that it isn't the do I have the ability to paint? Do I understand painting? Do I understand what colors to use or shapes? It isn't any of that. Yeah. The entire exercise is, can you get out of the way? Yeah. Can Do you know how to step aside and stop thinking about, is that right? Is this, this is, perfect? This is, is this where it goes? This is all spirituality. Yes. That yeah. is what spirituality is saying. Yeah. Is get out of right, wrong, yes, no, good, bad and just let the sediment settle yeah. on your awareness or in your case, in your painting and let it be. But then the evolved thing that we're all trying to do is I do affirmations every morning that might be corny, but one of them is I'm a beloved child of God. Yeah. And that is like, that's a good, I have to remind myself all the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that's religious language. That might not be, you could say I'm at home in the universe. I belong here. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I deserve the space. It's all the same. It's all the same. Yeah. Yeah. But when you paint something and you're not worried about what other people think about it, I, I find that profoundly spiritual. Here's well, that, my, it okay. translates too. It translates in the sense of like, uh, um, I, you know, af after a painting, I remember the, the very first time it really hit me and I was, I was painting out in the garage and I was interested in it, but it is, you know, when you don't know technically what you're doing, it's, it's frustrating and you, and you start out by thinking that you're trying to make a painting. Yeah. But you're not. You're just painting. You're not making a painting. You're just right. painting. Right. You're not there's not there's not meant to be an end product. It should just be an exercise. Right. And so I went out to the garage Which one is night. also very spiritual by the way. This is yeah, it it, it was like uh, uh a little over a year ago. Um and it shocks me how many paintings I did in a year that I really like because it it isn't who I've been for 40 years yeah. and then suddenly i'm very dedicated to it um but i uh i went out to the garage and i was a little high and i put on an album that i i didn't totally know it was uh um uh ladies and gentlemen were floating in space um and i put it on and i i Who wrote that Who it's wrote uh, that? spiritualized interestingly enough okay and I, I i've always loved that song but i'm like i've never listened to this whole album i'm gonna put this album on i'm a little high i've got a cocktail here or a glass of wine something and i put down a canvas and i just put like some paint on the canvas and i had uh like a one of those like little like knives that you like um not like knives really but yeah, like the tool knife. you know you paint up and i just like smeared it across and then I just grab another color and smear it across. And I did it. And I naturally came to the end of this painting as the album was ending. And I put it up on the easel and I looked at it. And I went inside and I told my wife, I was like, I think you should come out here. I go, I think this is the best painting I've ever made in my life. And we went out to the garage and she looks at it and she goes, Yeah, it's fine. It's good. And I go, and I and and I love that that was her response. She was like, Yeah, it's fine. It's good. And I I'm still looking at it and I go, I love it. No, I love it. And that was the first time wow. I wasn't affected by the fact that she didn't love it. And it was like the handcuffs were coming off going, yes. Oh good. I'm not here to make, I, I I'm glad you don't like it and or, or love it. And I'm glad you're saying, yeah, it's fine. I'm glad you said it's fine <laughs> It's because it challenged me to go. Cause I could have then gone, well, what do you think it needs? Or what do you, and I, sometimes I do ask that because yeah. there's an uncertainty about a painting that yeah. I clearly, don't know where it stands but to look at that one and go no this one's this one's good and i really 
love it. And I've shown it to other people. I've had I've shown this painting to people who fucking they love it. They go, oh, that's great. I've shown it to people that are like, what else do you have? And I'm yeah. like, this is, this is the it, it makes me so happy because then when I do a painting that I maybe don't fully believe in, it makes me step back and go, quit thinking you need to fix this. Because remember, half the people hate what you love and half the people love what you hate. Yeah. <laughs> so this to somebody is maybe great and it's easier for me to now go, all right, that one is for sale because I'm not trying to keep it. You right, know? right. But it, there's something in all of that. But I, I loved all, every moment of that. I, I also think it's funny. This is back to bathtub and pants. Everything is a mirror. And I've used this example before, but Val and I were just having this beautiful day when I think it was before Lila was born. So it was just like more of the dating time, the yeah. hanging out. It was all about us. And we watched the movie Why Him? Brian Cranston and James Franco. I don't know it. Oh, wait, that, I do know it. Yeah, yeah. That's yes. sort of my point. I think I audition not, for not it. a lot of buzz <laughs> on the movie Why Him? Yeah. 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 And it's fine. Yeah. But we were so in love and just so happy that we watched Why Him and we were able to project our own joy onto this movie. Yeah. That didn't abuse our joy and ruin it. It wasn't like so bad that it shit on it. Some (laughs) art can do that. Yeah. But it became a vessel for how we were already feeling. And if there's anything, art, music, I've had that a lot. I don't know. It, it can be so disappointing. You play someone a song that really matters to you and they don't understand it. Yeah. But you're not even really hearing the song. You're re Like what I'm saying is you painted that painting. You had the record, you had the weed. Yeah. You had the, the like even your story. It's like if you, what I'm saying is your experience imbued the painting with something that wasn't just on the canvas. Yeah. And that's everything. Yeah. It's Wilson the volleyball. I'm not trying to be funny. No, I get it. It's like human beings, you can make a, a totem. You can make something, you can make a rock precious if it if you tell a story. This is, again, we're back to strippers and, and what breakfast. <laughs> I can get into sports if you tell me. It always comes back to strippers. It, uh, in the breakfast and the yeah. McGriddle. Yeah. But I can get into sports if you fill me in yeah. on why it matters and what it means. And like if somebody tells me a certain pool move is really hard to pull off and then you show me the first guy that did it or whatever yeah that's imbuing it with value and sometimes you just show someone doing a pool move and who fucking cares yeah 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 uh i want uh, <laughs> i had just had a moment of self-doubt where i'm like i don't think i said anything <laughs> 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 i don't think i said anything new i know i said something but i'm like i think people know that I yeah think people know that yeah have you ever, you, you haven't done the pod in a long time, and I love your paintings, by the way, and we'll, maybe we'll, I'll Instagram the one you're talking about when this comes out. But have you, here are the new questions that we ask. Great. Have you ever almost died? Have you ever seen a ghost? Uh, you can tell me about a great nap you've taken. <laughs> oh, man. that Those are all so different. <laughs> um, I did a sensory deprivation tank yesterday. Mm. And I think I've done them 15 to 20 times total. And yesterday was the best it has ever been, ever. And I liken that to an incredible nap because See, I, was like I was laying there. I was laying there. I like you've ever said that. Just laying there and just feeling so good in the 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 blackness and then the warm water and just floating and feeling so great. And I think I put the earplug in a little too far and I, it was hurting me a little bit and I started to get like a little bit of a headache and I was like, I think this is attributed to what is being, (laughs) what this earplug is doing. And I was like, ah, it'll be fine. This, let's try to just work through it. And about five minutes later, I was like, nope, it's, it's over. The nap, (laughs) this space, this comfortable space is over because I have to get up and deal with this. And I got up, wiped my face off, got out of the tank where the shower is. And for about 10 minutes could not get the earplug out because everything was so slippery. I was drying everything off. Still so slippery, drying this, doing whatever I could. Salty, slippery too. Salty, slippery, could not get anything dry enough to where I could get a grip to pull it out. And it's every time I try, 
It goes in further. It's going in a little further. So I'm having to like it's limit the into. efforts that I'm doing. Yeah. And then finally I got a grip and pulled it out. And it was, I was like, oh, it's so funny how I went from this blissful piece and I, in my head going, hold on to this. It, when you get out, <laughs> keep this. Keep this. And yeah. yet here I am going, ah, my fucking Yes. <laughs> my ear's going to bleed and I'll never hear again. And then I'm just taking a shower and I'm like, Already right back. This world, God damn it. This, this world doesn't work. This world doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work. It's a clue. Yeah. It's a blood in the water. Yeah. Uh, Byron Katie calls that the thought that kicks you out of heaven. You're sitting yeah. in a hammock and there's a sunset and the birds and it's perfect. And you go, what if I had a cocktail right now? <laughs> <laughs> and that is the truest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the truest thing. Yeah. Um, I love that answer. What What was it like before it was ruined? It was just great. I was in that warm, comfortable space of like not really feeling myself, but like, you know, eyes are closed and you're just, you're lost in it. I wasn't like hallucinating or deeply meditative, but you know, you're, it's just you. You've done it, I'm sure. I right? have, yeah. yeah. You're in that deeply kind of meditative space where it just, you feel so good. It's, I, I, it feels similar to when you're in bed and it's early enough that you don't have to, you don't have to jump right up, but you're like, I don't want to get out of yeah. bed yet and I've got 20 more minutes and you just feel oh God, you just gave me. so blissful and you're like, this is what you almost, I, I think when I'm especially in the tank, I'm like, this is the closest to being back in the womb. placenta and the womb. You just like reminded me, I, my mom used to put these flannel sheets on my bed in winter and I remember, I think I got up to pee because something needs to disrupt it to recognize it. Yeah. I got up and I remember I just, I rem I can really feel it. Wasn't worried about anything. Yeah. And got back into the softest, warmest sheets. Didn't have anything to get up for or any reason to be anywhere. Yeah. And I I think I've been chasing that feeling. Of course. It's, uh, yeah. My whole and life. I, I, I loved it. I, that, that just feeling that yesterday and then being like, oh, this fucking earplug. Yeah. That's Dean the Saltine coming Dude, in. God damn, Dean got in my ear. Remember when those dogs ate that old lady? That's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what the, right. <laughs> it's what it is. Never forget dogs eat people. That's pushing my daughter on the thing and going, my tile battery is falling. Yeah. It's, it's going to die. <laughs> right. It's, it's going to, I'm going to have to get new flat, those like little yeah. nickel batteries. Yeah. Where am I going to get one of those? Yeah. And have she's Amazon just out loud free. going, who gives a fuck, dad? Push exactly. me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Push me. <laughs> I think it's so funny how times were so clear and other times were so murky. Yeah. Just so. Have you ever seen a ghost? I don't think I've seen a ghost. <laughs> I don't have a ghost story that where I feel like that was. Definitive. Definitive. But you know what? I, you don't have this brain. I know it for a fact. I have this brain where when someone goes, have you ever almost died or have you seen a ghost? I have maybe had those experiences, but as soon as I'm asked them, no, no, they're gone. I do have that brain. Yeah. And I relate. In fact, a big thesis of this show that I've never stopped to like write out or give a lot of thought is like, let me tell you in the hopes that it'll make you think of one because it's so much easier than being <laughs> right. asked something point blank. <laughs> right. Because somebody was, somebody in this conversation, I was like, I've never seen a ghost. And then I remembered that every time I go home to my mom's house in Arlington, the ghost of her cat jumps on the bed. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess I do have. Or that story where you almost said, and you're like, life isn't always. In fact, let me ask you this. You know that feeling, maybe you get it on stage. I'll, I'll tell Val about my show, and I'm like, I could see the hall of records that is my brain, and I could open any card catalog and find any word, any thought, any yeah, analogy, yeah. any metaphor any example that's yeah. my favorite place to be and then a lot of the rest of the time i'm just like what is it called yeah. you? i know contact lens god when you can't think of a word on stage we're back to where we the started worst ozone layer yeah um well don't worry about it how about the hardest <laughs> uh, not that, i didn't even have to say that that kind of acknowledged that you had failed yeah don't worry about it <laughs> up until that point it was fine you're forgiven yeah that's been a big thing lately it's on it's on a isn't it up there? It says forgiveness. Yeah, it's on the post-it note. Forgiveness is overrated is what Dr. Uh, Doctor Father Greg Boyle said on this podcast. He goes, because forgiveness acknowledges that you did something. Yeah, yeah. Mercy is where it's at. Yeah, yeah. Mercy is like, what are you even, what are you talking about? It's yeah, yeah. all, we're all just ice sculptures, man. It's, yeah, we're all yeah. just melting. It's fine. Like, don't even, it's gone. 
Can you tell me the time you laughed the hardest in your life? I just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I, I just told the story, but I, uh, I, I was an altar server at a Catholic school and Great start. they would pull you out of school if they needed two altar servers to work a funeral that was during the day. And I was in sixth or seventh grade, I think six maybe. And they pulled myself and uh, Archie Gallivan uh, out of school. I, kn I knew before you said it that it was going to be a great name. Yeah. Archie Gallivan. Archie Gallivan. Yeah. Of the Gallivan printing press. Yes. <laughs> and we, we are the two uh, altar servers and uh, it, the funeral is happening. It's not open casket or anything, but you know, it's, it's, it's very small. Uh, let's say like 30 people and you know, they're the, the, everything's good. It's happening, whatever the funeral is. And uh, the reason this is fun as an altar service is because the one thing they will actually pay you for, like they had to pay and the church gives you like 15 bucks. So it's kind of a big deal. <laughs> and uh, Archie's sitting next to me. There's two stained glass windows uh, that are across from us. You know, the priest is here facing the church and we're sideways and there's two small stained glass windows up here. And one is Mary holding baby Jesus and just looking at baby Jesus. And in the next one, Mary is uh, looking down on, you know, assume earth or whatever. And her arms are open like this. And Archie goes, doesn't it look like she just dropped Jesus? Because <laughs> she's like this. And then the next window... <laughs> And I oh. look at this and then I look at this and I it's two panels can't not laugh. And it is, he kind of laughs. I am like, I'm doing the like, <laughs> like trying everything, but you know, the more you try not, the more you are, cause it has to get out and I cannot laugh. The priest is beat red, angry <laughs> people over here are in mourning. <laughs> <laughs> of a someone who has died in their family and yeah. they are like in shock and i he's like archie is like you've got to stop you've got to stop i'm like i can't, I can't oh stop. my god i'm like literally like doing that wildly audible the church is very quiet outside of the person speaking which is still quiet in a monotone like death yes. is upon yes. us yes so other noises just... <laughs> are so audible you could hear a mouse and i I, 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 re, I will always remember that as one of the times that I, maybe not the absolute hardest I laugh where I got like a headache or like stomach pains, but one of the hardest types of laughter where I couldn't get it under control and I couldn't just take the deep breath and go, save it for later, don't look. This is the whole time I'm like, my eyes can't not look, look up there it. and go, God, he's absolutely right. So much so that at my uh, sister's wedding, in the same, same church. church, I'm like pointing it out to people and I'm going, doesn't it look like, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it does. It looks like <laughs> finally in a safe place, but it's yeah. not as funny. Cause you real that's a yeah. funeral laugh. And I, t but it caused me to like tell people that story to be like, Hey, I got in trouble. I was sitting right over there. And like this, this. James Marsden just did this. And we were saying that church, the bringer of the best laughs. Yeah. In history. Yeah, yeah. Aren't in comedy clubs. Right. It's all of them. Yeah. Having asked and you can't hundreds let them of people out. this question. You have to contain them. It, it's only, my, I've told this, it's not a good story, but mine was getting a tour of a library. Yeah. In college. Yeah. And the woman kept saying, and this is where we keep the professor's theses. <laughs> and I just thought that sounded too much like the professor's feces. Yeah. See, you get it. <laughs> and as if she knew that's what I was finding funny. Yeah. She kept saying feces. Yeah. And the various theses are stored. This is airtight. <laughs> so the theses can't get out. I was just dying laughing. Yeah. Libraries, churches, yeah. funerals. Yeah. That's All these not even quiet that, but spaces. You say that to me just in a field. Yeah. Maybe a, huh, huh, kind of sounds like feces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's also tour academic tour first day of college yeah. funeral it like matters. these it matters <laughs> yeah yes we should do a comedy special where it's, it's just you and me whispering to people at a funeral <laughs> like we shoot a very run and gun and you're just sort of like have you ever known <laughs> and try to get people that yeah. can't laugh yeah laughing or just pass them pass them a note pass them a note and they like read it like 
They start losing it. <laughs> I'm going to say this is a genius because it doesn't even have to be that funny. Yeah. 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 Which is great for me. Right. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, Rory, I, I, I remember the question I was going to ask you, which is why do you like the painting with less effort? But I don't know. We don't have to do it. We can end. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I love it. I just love it as like, in, in it's case, what I'm, it's what I'm able to do and enjoy. And it makes me, I've taken a painting class to try to do profiles, uh, and on with oil and it's, I would love to be able to do it, but I'm just more into grabbing some paint and just seeing what happens. Yeah. You know, I guess there's more room for your participation. The less the artist is doing too. Yeah. I, I, I Maybe this is, we should have ended, but who cares? It's like when I'm a big turning point for me with art was realizing that my reaction to it is correct. Yeah. That is like, instead of wanting to cheat off my neighbor's paper, sometimes it's fun to know the history of a painting or what they meant by the painting. Yeah. Or can you, have you noticed the play of this, this, and this? And, oh, he's violating, oh, primary colors on, oh, Picasso did this one. Oh, that's all blue or whatever. Yeah. But when you look at an abstract painting, instead of thinking of it in a very commercial, materialistic, cheesy Western way, I could do that. You can just be vulnerable enough to remember that sometimes when your eyes are closed, depression is just a swirl of purple or like a speckle of green. Yeah. And then when you look at a painting, it triggers that in you and you can't even really articulate it, but it makes you think of the first time you went to the dentist and you were scared. Yeah. But you're like, that's got to be wrong. How could he have known that or she have known that? They didn't. And here you are having the experience. Can you have that by looking at my couch? Yeah. And art is a, a space where we've isolated and welcomed that type of yeah. engagement with reality. Yeah. Doesn't say you can only have it with art, but it goes like, let's make this, just like you can't only think of God in church. A museum is like, let's just have this be a consecrated space where you can let something speak to you. Right. Yes, a payphone can also move you. Yes. Or yes, your car or your... I was making a smoothie this morning and I ripped the lid off the the protein and like the it made a wisp of in yeah. the sun. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's as beautiful as anything <laughs> I've ever seen in my life. Exactly. That's, that's bath with your pants. We yeah. just wish to be alert yeah. to that level. And art yeah. invites us to be that way. Yeah. All right, I guess I just... I love that. I wanted to say some shit, I guess. I love it. I just worried I didn't say anything. <laughs> JK. <laughs> Roy Scovel, just drink the magic, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. We end on, on like a weird aggressive. <laughs> Will you just drink it? It's 35 milligrams the of caffeine. What the fuck is wrong with the you? The fuck is wrong with you? I thought we just Look, talked about that. <laughs> I am never going to see you and not mention. By the way, how long have we known each other? Rafifi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. New York. Yeah, yeah. I actually, until this moment, Lifetimes ago. forgot that we were in New York at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I've known you and been with you in L.A. for so long that that feels like that all that's happened. But there it's was been a New the York. bulk. The bulk has been it out has. here. But there was. I was in New York so long. I've three and a half, four years, which Me I mean is a long time. But it's not. Well, I, I yeah. kind of wish it was longer. Kind of wish I stayed longer. But, but you went on stage. And it it really affected me. So I'm going to mention it every... I'm sure I said it last time. I'm sure I said it last time. And I'm also sure you don't remember. <laughs> you went on stage. For, like you go, but what is love? This is my version of that story. You get on stage and you go, does anyone have a Viagra? Because I need to get hard right now. <laughs> and you probably said that 10 times. And if you don't find that funny... I don't know what to do with you. But if you do, the 10th time you're saying it, there's something is really funny about a pill that gives you a biological, (laughs) like it should be a natural response. And then something you should be embarrassed about, yelling about it publicly. So there's two benign violations. There's two jokes (laughs) happening. But it's also just the third benign, the third joke is the joke. Like, of all the ways you could open, you're yelling at the crowd, yelling, <laughs> does anyone have a Viagra? Because I need to get hard right now. <laughs> also, fourth joke, why does he need to be hard? He's about to do stand-up. That's the best. Yeah, you never talk about it either. You don't give some reason. No. Yeah, yeah. That's super important. <laughs> right. If you had been like, a big because. part of my act is this at the yeah. end, like it, it would almost get too dirty yeah, or weird, yeah, yeah. but just never. And how much, like, look, I'm using that bit as a mirror to me. 
but how much of life is acting like something is normal that isn't normal? Right. Yeah, yeah. And that is a it's absurdity that helps me go like that makes as much sense as so much shit that we're acting like right. makes sense, and that's weird. And now I can laugh. It's just yeah. I'm I'm always gonna remind you of that bit. I love it. All right, would you say keep it crispy? Is there any bit of mine that uh, keep really blows your way? Keep <laughs> it crispy. <laughs> yeah, baby.